I'm Sarah Clendenning, the president of Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council. The date is uh, Thursday, November 18th at 6.02 p.m. This is a general board and stakeholder meeting. Um, Secretary Fernanda Sanchez, uh, roll call, please. Sarah Clendenning. Present. Ben Wadsworth. Present. Fernanda Sanchez, present. Vincent Chente Montalvo. Present. Nancy Soto. Present. William Rodriguez Morrison. Benny Madera. Present. Didia Delizer. Present. Joanna Iraeta. Richard William Larson. Present. Emily Har. Present. Melanie Belomo Shiflet. Present. Vicente Gonzalez Reyes. Alvina Marrufo. Victor Asanedo. Present. Diego Zapata. Present. Gil Arevalo. Present. Richard Ortiz. Present. Steve Lucero. Here. Lina Ruiz. Selena Ortega. Present. And Diana Tran. Present. Hi, everybody. Okay, I just, I'm gonna make just a couple announcements. Um, uh, notice to paid representatives. If you are compensated to interact with the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council, city law may require you to register as a lobbyist and report your activity. Any individual may qualify as a lobbyist. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, land developers, real estate specialists, and others. Um, you have to go to ethics.lacity.org <laughs> LACity slash lobbying for assistance. Um, it's on our agenda. Um, and then the code of conduct. Vince, can you run down the code of conduct real quick? Just a summary. Uh, you just got to be peaceful to each other, be civil. No bad, no fingering, nothing. Uh, be just be gentle with each other. That's that's no, just no, 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 like you know, racist, sexist talk, or you know, you'll be cut out of the meeting. They get it, you know, um, all kinds of stuff. Attacks on people. Oh, um, okay. So with that, we're going to open it up to public comments. Non-agenda public comments. One minute per person. If there's anybody from the public who would like to speak. Um, please raise your hand or press star nine. Give me one second. We have one. Okay, one second. Vince, do you have your timer? Yes, let me get the timer on here. Okay, we have uh, Mitzi Watu. Please state one your minute. name for the record. It's one minute. Let me change yeah. it. Okay. Okay. Mitzi Watsu, please state your name for the record. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm Mitzi Watsu. Um, I'm with the Lincoln Heights Benefit Association of Los Angeles. I was at this board meeting last month and talked about respect and communication. I asked if we were on the agenda to let us know and stop going behind our backs. As I stated before, this is unprofessional and ethical, yet here we are again. We were on this agenda and we were not notified. So I'm appealing to you again for positive change for our community and find ways to help this community instead of dividing it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Steve. Thank you. Any other uh, public comments? Yes, we have, um, give me one second. Uh, we have uh, an email with CT Williams 2012. Can you please state your name for the record? Okay, Dr. Tom Williams, uh, LA 32 Neighborhood Council Land Use and Development Committee, also Citizens Coalition for a Safe Community. There was no telephone number for uh, call-ins on the agenda. There's no chat nor Q&A in the Zoom portion. So we're quite concerned regarding communications with other people. So. Uh, basic element, I was expecting a CIS or something regarding the housing element of the general plan and the redistricting of Lincoln Heights because 
in LA 32, we're quite concerned about redistricting and the housing element, how it will affect El Sereno and Rose Hills and your side of the hills. So talk to you later. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if anybody wants to know about past actions, you have to look at our website because we do a lot of um, those things that you just mentioned. Our website has all supporting documents. Okay, so any more um, public uh, comments? Yes, Rosalio Munoz. Rose, 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 for the record. Rosalio? Uh, let me see. Um. Rosalio, if you can hear us, if you can unmute yourself. If you press, if you're on your phone. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Rosalio Munoz here. And I'm very happy to be here. I was so pleased to be asked to participate in the Save Flat Top uh, effort and uh, be in the, the hearing that we had and listening to everybody and being able to give my own kind of history and uh, concern with it. And uh, I really saw a breadth and depth of community support on that that is uh, so admirable. And I also um, want to uh, say there's other things we can also look at besides uh, the, the aspects of planning. I think we need to, at some point, take a look at the downtown uh, planning department uh, proposal that they voted in September to put bring before the city council. And I think we should start looking at that because it can have rippling effects on all the surrounding neighborhoods like Lincoln Heights, Boyle Heights, Pico Union, uh, West Lake, Echo Park, and um, uh, Elysian Valley. Uh, so, and it's something I think this neighborhood council and it'll have also rippled through 90032. So I'm just happy to be here and able to participate with this uh, neighborhood council in Lincoln Heights. Thank you, Rosalio. Thank you, Rosalio. Any other um, public comments? You press star nine or raise your hand. Yes, we have a uh, Creighton. Please state your name for the record. Hi, my name is Creighton Baxter. Uh, I'm a resident in Lincoln Heights. I heard that a Chick-fil-A is trying to open a location uh, in the neighborhood. And I just wanted to say that I don't think our neighborhood needs any more fast food chains, particularly one like Chick-fil-A, which has um, such an awful history of the way that they uh, treat people and the politics that they support. And I would just like to voice my general disdain with their presence in our neighborhood. And I don't think they should be here. Thanks. Thank you. Craig. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question about that as a board member. I'd like to ask that caller. Oh, Richard, you, haven't, you haven't been recognized. I don't need to be recognized. Warning if you keep speaking. And, we, the, uh, and just a reminder that we are on public comment, not board member comment. I'm not commenting. I'm asking a question of the person who just spoke. We do we not have the time to ask questions. We don't do that in place. I'm the chair and I did not acknowledge you, so you cannot speak. And is if you this an again, agenda item? You're going to be silenced. It's public comment. This is time for the public to talk, not you. And not, no board right, But our bylaws say that we can speak and ask questions when there's a public comment okay. that we. But we want to. No, you can't ask questions. Question. If you continue, we're going to mute everybody. Vince? Okay, let's continue on. Uh, the number in uh, 12318, please state your name for the record. You got one minute. Please unmute yourself. The last three digits of the phone number is 180. Hi, my name is Richard Zaldivar. I am the executive director and the founder of the Wallace Memorials Project. I want to take this minute to invite 
all of you from the neighborhood council to our rededication of the eighth monument at Lincoln Park on Wednesday, December the 1st at 630. Also a uh, part of the commemoration of 40 years of AIDS, we're having a Las Posadas at Lincoln Park on Saturday, December 4th from 12 to four. With the last hour, we're hosting Las Cafeteras. We will have uh, informational health booths uh, at Lincoln Park. And we also invite the neighborhood council if they would like to have a booth there uh, to disseminate information to the community free of charge, we invite you to that. Thank you. Oh, by the way, for information on how to sign up to attend the event on December 1st, you can go to our website at thewallafmemorias.org and you could uh, sign up. It'll be in a warm tent that evening and it's only, uh, only vaccinated people will be able to attend the inside of the tent. We'll have monitors on the outside for people who are not vaccinated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Okay, uh, we now have uh, Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams. Please state your name for the record. Yeah, this is Christian Adams, uh, a resident of Lincoln Heights. Uh, I'm call I wanted to ask a question because we all know that uh, gentrification and illegal flipping is an ongoing issue in our community. Um, I wanted to know if we can probably just um, share with the community other resources to maybe report these um these developers that come into the communities illegally without permits, renovate and then sell, uh, which is just causing a further detriment to the community and the housing crisis, um, as well as something to check the status of those reports, um, because a lot of times you can report and you don't see any action from it. So I think the neighborhood would benefit from some little more insight on that, please. That's all, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Um, yeah, the, the next planning and land use committee meeting is on December 1st, Wednesday. That's a, that's a planning issue if anybody's interested. Our uh, next, our next, speak, our next uh, public comment is Candace Maples. If you can please state your name for the record. Candace? Yes, hi, this is Candace Maples. I just wanted to uh, reference regarding the proposed project for 2824 to 2830 on Pruitt. It's case number ZA20215204 ZAD. I just wanted to um, have the record show that a notice of public hearing was posted, a sign was posted at the bottom of the hill, but that sign is completely blank. There's nothing on it regarding the address or what's being proposed or a date or a time for the hearing that took place almost a week uh, to a week and a half ago. I only knew about it because of online. And I just wanted that to be noted that that sign was blank. Thank you. Thank you, Candace. Our next speaker is Lena. Hey, I'm here. Can I be um, placed over onto your, oh. your side? Sorry, Lena. No worries. Thank you. I see our meet, our meet is over there, too. Vince. Can you go, go into the... I will, I will bring them over right now. Let me just... Public comment of any kind. That's why I just want to... Okay, we have the... Felipe? There's, Vince, there's there? more. Just says can't. No, no, I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring them over right now, but I got to exit out of this and mute everyone. Oh, right and bring okay. Them over. Felipe? So, yeah, Felipe, if you can state your name for the record. Well, I'm sorry, I just had my phone on my ear, but, um, and I accidentally raised up my hand, but I'm just here to also support um, Chick-fil-A. I mean, it's just a great idea, I believe, uh, to bring, you know, money to the community. Um, so I just wanted uh, to call in and support uh, the Chick Fil A, and also just want to say hello to the team, making Heights Neighborhood Council. Hey, thank you. Thank you. For okay. Me. Our next speaker is Legere. 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 Excuse me for twisting it. Oh wait, do we have a panelist? Is Felipe a panelist, Vince? 
Yeah, I just sent it, I sent it to them. They should start. But he's not, no, but we have Felipe, the guy, uh, person who just spoke, is up on the top of the board here. Yeah. Hi, 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 everyone. How are you? Oh, Lucia. Hey. 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 Hi. hi. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just calling in to voice my opposition to the Chick Fil A at the what was the buy right property, the buy right grocery store. Um, I feel strongly against it. It's not only a danger to our community in terms of health issues that um, that is that are posed by fast food. We have already two other um, chain restaurants that are fried chicken specifically within a three block radius. KFC, El Pollo Loco. We have two Jack in the Boxes, one McDonald's, a Carl's Jr., all within like a five block radius. Um, it's dangerous to the health of our community. Moreover, the politics of Chick-fil-A are, in my opinion, horrendous um, and predatory and completely discriminate against a lot of a majority of our community or a large number of people in our community. Um, and I just hope that you guys take that into consideration um, and that we can stop this. We don't need another fast food chain that um, poses dangerous health hazards and has terrible politics, um, completely racist and anti-LGBTQ politics. Okay, that's, that's my two cents, guys. I miss you all. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I like you. Okay, our next speaker is uh, Katrina. Uh, hello, my name is Katrina and I'm a student of Lincoln Heights. I'm also a resident. Uh, I want to state my opinion that I am strongly for Chick-fil-A because mainly of job openings and me as a student, uh, I believe that places like Chick-fil-A are a bit safer than compared to a KFC and other restaurants or other fast food joints. And that's it. All right. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you, Katrina. And then our... Our next uh, speaker is going to be Max. Mes Excuse me if I twist, but the first name is Max. Max. I'm going to twist Ms. it. Lansky. There we go. Hi. Um, uh, I uh, am calling. Hi, everybody. I'm calling in opposition to uh, Chick-fil-A coming to the neighborhood of Lincoln Heights. Um, I've been a resident here uh, for about 10 years almost. And I consider this area mostly a food desert. Uh, there's already a lot of fast food chains uh, present. I don't see the point of having another one. I do have uh, uh, sympathies with the idea that it would bring you know, some jobs, but couldn't there also be another business of some kind that could also bring the same thing while also bringing more healthier options and affordable options to the residents of, of Lincoln Heights. I'd really like to see that. So, uh, and this is not even mentioning the horrific uh, stance of the organization um, against the uh, LGBTQ plus uh, community. So thank you. Thank you. Max. Okay, our next speaker is Robert Vega. Robert Vega, hi. Hello, Robert. I don't think I think we're having audio issues with him. We can come back to him. Does he have to press any button like star six or anything? No, I see that the mic is on. Uh, it's not blocked, but it sounds like it's mm -hmm. in the key. Can you hear me? Oh, well, yeah. Hear you. <laughs> you, can, you can hear me? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Robert, we can hear you now. Okay. I'm calling in support of a project that hasn't even been presented to the community. Um, yes, I believe that um, bringing jobs to the high school kids is something that is needed here in this community. Also, I think uh, the beautification of Griffin Avenue and Broadway is something that our community is in need of. Um, so I'm strongly going to support or if it even is something that is coming to this community. Um, 
So yes, we'll have a, a strong support for it. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Okay, we have oops, one second. We got uh, Dan Carp. Please unmute yourself and state your name. My name is Dagan Carp. Dagan, hi. I'm calling to speak in opposition. I think we have a saturation of unhealthy fast food in the neighborhood. I would rather see a locally owned business or something with healthier options. Thank you, Dagan. Okay. We have two more hands up, right, Vince? We do, but uh, Mr. Adams already spoke under public comment. I don't know if you want to give him an opportunity to speak a second time. Well, I could speak during uh, announcements. Okay. Mr. Adams. Okay, so uh, no more hands up. So we'll move on to um, announcements. Community and board member announcements. We'll start with uh, community announcements. If there's anybody from the community that has like an announcement, public announcement, you have one minute to speak. Press star nine or raise your hand. Okay, uh, let me bring up, let me see, where's the hands? Okay, uh, let me see, Mitzi, Wat Mitzi Watsu, if you can please state your name for the record. Hi, Mitzi Watsu. I just wanted to let uh, the community know that the uh, Lincoln Heights Farmers Market um, is still offering a free market match to CalFresh recipients um, up to $20 till the end of the year. We are looking to expand that into next year. And we also have the tree lighting um, December 1st, Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Other public announcements? Yes, uh, Tom Carey, please state your name for the record. Hi, my name is uh, Tom Carey. I'm the priest over at the Church of the Epiphany. And uh, since the opportunity came, I just wanted to announce that we'll be celebrating Las Mañanitas uh, for the La Virgen de Guadalupe on Sunday, December 12th at 6.30 a.m. So you can get up and hear some mariachi music and have uh, tamales and champarado afterwards. So uh, please come. Citron uh, Altura, Lincoln Heights, 6.30, December 4th in the morning. Thanks. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, and then uh, we have Rosalio Munoz. Please state your name for the record. Just uh, also to another concern we have at uh, Church of the Epiphany that our uh, other clergy person, Father Richard uh, Estrada is uh, will be undergoing open heart surgery this coming Monday. And we're asking for prayers, good thoughts, good vibrations to be sent in his direction uh, because this for a successful operation and uh, much better health that it promises uh, for him. So just wanted to make that request. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Any other public? Okay, there's, there's no more on the public side. Okay, so we'll go to board member announcements. If there's anybody from the board, please raise your hand. Okay, Gilbert. Good evening, everyone. I, first thing I, I want to do is, is point out that uh, the uh, uh, it's supposed to be non-agenda items. When the people were talking about Chick-fil-A, they should have gone, uh, waited for the item to come up on, on the agenda. They're It's non-agenda items, so just clarification there. But I do want to make an announcement saying hopefully that when eight o'clock comes around that we will join uh, Mayor, Mayor uh, Garcetti's uh, memorial to the uh, people, victims of uh, COVID-19 and we can stop at uh, eight o'clock and join him in the, in the applause for the, the past uh, COVID victims. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. All right, thank you. Any other board member announcements? Yes, uh, Richard Larson. Hi, yeah, and I'm just going to read a, a statement I have here that I received. In recent weeks, the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment has received several complaints about the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council board members making political statements, taking positions, or commenting on neighborhood or city matters, either outside of a public neighborhood council meeting or during a neighborhood council meeting where the subject matter might not have been on the agenda. 
uh, please be mindful of the Brown Act's restrictions on board member discussions. Unlike members of the public who afforded an opportunity during general board comments to comment about any matter that was in the Neighborhood Council's jurisdiction, the Neighborhood Council board members are limited to discussing only items on an agenda, which was just discussed. If an item is not on agenda, board members cannot discuss or vote on the matter during the meeting. There are very limited circumstances when the board may speak on non-agenda items, but those exceptions do not include making political statements, taking positions, or commenting substantially on an issue. Second, please keep in I'm, mind that commentary related to board business can also cause the appearance of bias or appearance that a board member is acting out of personal motive or benefits. A board member's statement Richard, may lead to the result that up. board members might Thank you. Um, all right, so we'll move on. Any other board member announcements? Uh, we have uh, Diego Zapata. Diego? Oh, hi, everyone. Um, I'll make it quick because we've been having comments for a while. Uh, Northeast Trees is putting together a uh, tree giveaway, uh, a native plant giveaway at Ascot Hills Park, December 11 from 9 to 11. We're hoping to target uh, Ligon Heights residents and Encinal residents and uh, Boyle Heights residents. So if you uh, have space in your yard for a free native plant or a tree, feel free to swing by uh, at the Ascot Hills Park Nursery. Um, we'll be giving away lots of native plants and a lot of them are from Flat Top. So you'll be taking a piece of the park home with you then. What was the date again in the time? December 11 from 9 to 11 okay. a.m. 9 to 11, Ascot Hills Park. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Diego. Cool. Any other board member announcements? There are no board members, but I noticed that at Mr. Adams put his hand up in the oh, public. Mr. Adams. Adams. Yeah, we'll, we'll bounce back to Mr. Adams. Okay, Mr. Adams, please state your name for the record. Uh, yeah, this is Christian Adams. Uh, I just wanted to comment on uh, what Mr. Lawson said. Uh, I think it's you're you're walking a very uh, dangerous line when you try and censor people like that um, from just general comments. So obviously, there is a time and a place for for non agenda items. However, I think we should all be very wary when it comes to censoring people uh, on their political beliefs, because a lot of times the political beliefs are completely valid. And just because you may have a bias against somebody else's political belief does not give you the right to censor them. So I just wanted to, to make sure that we do our best to keep an open mind as well as keep the biases to the very end so that you can ask questions and not attack. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adams. I have a comment have, in response to that since it was directed Richard, at me. I believe I Richard, have a moment Richard, you don't to say have that. the floor. We have Melanie, First of all, that was not Melanie my comment. Bowman. That was a comment. Yep. Richard, be quiet. You're not recognized. That was a comment from Richard, the department. Okay. I'm going to make this announcement. Neighborhood empowerment. Richard, as of right now, you're you're impeding the process of the meeting. Well, it's some a violation impeding. of the code of conduct. Vince, can, you get, of neighborhood and can you get Jose Galdemez on the meeting? Their own? Jose's on the um, your silent you know. from well, hearing uh, what Sarah, Richard, you haven't been acknowledged have, by the chair. On, Sarah, Please. Sarah, do I have your permission to just uh, mute everyone and say let's mute everyone and then let's get Jose Galdemez on the horn on the on the speakers? <laughs> He's got his little hand up there. Okay, oh, Jose, I unmuted you. Hi, good evening. This is Jose. Galvanez with the Department of Human Department. Uh, just to like remind the board regarding the code of conduct, please uh, conduct yourself uh, civilly in a professional manner. Uh, uh, again, you do have your president uh, who then acknowledges who has the floor at, at the time to speak. Uh, also, uh, please don't be muting board members, uh, just call out the disruption. And if it continues to consist uh, of, of the disruptions, call for a break uh, and then come back uh, after that break and convene uh, the meeting. All right. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, breaks. OK. OK. Um, so ju just to let the board, the board members know is that everyone is now muted. So we have uh, make sure to raise your hands when you want to be acknowledged so that uh, Sarah can see it and then we'll unmute each individual as they speak. 
Yeah. Um, so Ma uh, Melanie was was next. Okay, Mel Melanie, you have an announcement. Hi, uh, I think Lena is still over on attendee side. That's all. Okay. Thanks. Can't wait to move forward with the meeting. Excited. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, there. I got her over again. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Mel. I don't see any more. Oh, uh, oh, we have Wendy. Ka oh, wait, that's government. Okay, so uh, Mr. Adams, he already spoke again. Okay, so we'll move on to the next item, right? Yes. Government reports, number five. Um, I believe we have a couple of gov govern government people, uh, city, city people uh, on the attendee side. Um, we have Wendy Castro from the mayor's office. Okay, let me uh, unmute Wendy. Hi, thank you so much. I um, just wanted to call in and introduce myself. I'm starting my fourth week and officially out in the community as of this week. Um, I'm gonna be the new East Side representative or East Area representative. Uh, the previous representative, Veronica Polanco, was promoted. Uh, so she's still with the mayor's office. Um, for those of you that did have a relationship with her, you, she's still available and, and you can reach out to her. But I have now officially been um, put into the position and will be here to support uh, the neighborhood council with whatever way I can support. So there was a few things that I wanted to um, share with the community as well as with the, with the board. The first one is that um, there were comeback checks uh, that were available through um, the American Rescue Plan Act. And the first round just closed, but there's gonna be a second round that's gonna be opening up for small businesses. And that essentially will provide $5,000 grants to approximately uh, the first the first round, approximately 5,000 city businesses, but the second round, most likely the same, hopefully more. And I just wanted to share that that is uh, something that is available to the community. As soon as I get the information of when it's reopening again, I will definitely share with the neighborhood council. That way, all of you can share on your social media and let uh, your small businesses know that they're able to apply for these grants. Uh, the second one is Safe Pass LA. Um, as we all know, we're still very much in a pandemic and um, there has been some policies uh, regarding Safe Pass LA and uh, certain establishments having to verify that the patrons, not their employees, are vaccinated against COVID-19 and or provide a negative COVID test 72 hours prior to um, visiting that establishment. So it officially launched on November 8th um, with City Outreach and Education. It will officially be enforced starting uh, November 29th. There's going to be additional information and resources um, on as well as frequently asked questions on the city website for small businesses to be able to, to tune into and, and find out more information about the enforcement. I want to make it very clear that the enforcement that the city is planning on um, starting off will be the first two months. It's not to find small businesses. It's really just to educate small businesses um, and make sure that they know that they're supposed to be checking vaccine status or negative COVID status. And so if, you know, by any chance, Anybody has any questions, please reach out to me. And then the last thing is the COVID-19 memorial that the mayor's office is having. Um, I, I was able to be a part of, of in doing the flag installation on Tuesday over at Griffith Park Memorial. It'll be up and uh, through Saturday, through Sunday, I apologize. Um, if you get a chance to go out there and, and, and see the memorial, there was one flag placed for every life that we have lost in LA County. It's uh, close to 27,000 and people that we have lost um, in LA County due to COVID-19. And it just seeing the flags really puts things into perspective. I appreciate um, the board member who shared that we could participate in today's meeting at 8 p.m. Um, please feel free to, to print out the information that I shared with you uh, via email um, this morning or last night and uh, post it on your social media or post it on social media to honor those that we have lost. I know that the neighborhood council did an ofrenda earlier this, you know, a couple weeks ago, and we really, it was beautiful, appreciated. Um, and it's really just about, even though we're very much still in a pandemic, just about, um, 
remembering those that we have lost due to this horrific pand pandemic. So that's it on my end. Um, please reach out to me uh, via email if you have any questions. And if I'm not able to attend the meeting um, in the future, I will definitely be sending a report for um, all of you to be able to put on the website and share. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Thank Wendy, you. Can, you, can you do us one favor and just give your email out for the board members? Yes, of course. It is wendy.castro, C-A-S-T-R-O, at lacity.org. So wendy.castro at lacity.org. Thank you. I don't have my city phone yet, but as soon as I do, I'll give you all my phone number as well. Thank oh. you. Thank you, Wendy, for coming to the meeting. Thank you for having me. Have a good meeting. Good to see you. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, we have Julio Torres is our next presenter, right? Yeah, or Julio is our okay. CD14. Hi, Julio. Hi, good evening, everybody. Hello. Madam President, thank you for uh, for inviting me to, to your meeting, um, Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council Board members. Uh, nice to meet you all. Um, I know um, we like to um, get to know us, uh, get to know you guys a little bit better, which is uh, uh, why I'm here. Uh, so my name is Julio Torres again. Um, it's J-U-L-I-O dot Torres, T-O-R-R-E-S at lacity.org. I am the area director uh, in El Sereno for council member Kevin De Leon. Um, I, and I, I'm sorry, and actually on your agenda, you had me as field deputy, so I'm actually the area director. Oh, the area uh, director. Sorry. Yeah, in El Sereno, <laughs> not a problem. Uh, and I do cover, uh, you know, uh, several areas uh, here in, in our district, um, uh, where I'm at currently right now at University Hills. Uh, I'm about to uh, present here uh, a report as well uh, at Cal State LA. Um, we also cover the Rose Hills area, Herman, uh, Monterey Hills, and of course, El Sereno. Uh, just wanted just to, again, just to uh, call in, say hello, introduce myself. Um, we're looking forward to um, engaging with the community with the, with the redistricting starting uh, January 1st. Um, looking forward to meeting everybody on the board. Um, including all the residents, businesses, schools, churches, parks, and all the other community-based orgs in the area there. So uh, very looking forward to it. Um, I will be um, uh, attending the January uh, council uh, meeting as well. And our plans are to um, add another staffer as well for the area so that um, that is something that we're going to be doing soon and I will keep you posted on that so wow. but thank you thank you very much thank you Julio you're welcome yeah. all right so okay. um, I don't see any more government officials all right so with that we'll move on to the next item oh one second uh, Jose just raised his hand can... oh Jose yeah Oh yeah, Jose is one of our, our officials. Yeah, sorry, uh, I didn't get a chance last time to make my announcement. So, uh, where is my sheet? Okay, here we go. Uh, so, uh, good evening, my name is Jose Galvamez with the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, the Neighborhood Empowerment Advocate for Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council. Uh, just have updates for the board. First off is the AB 361 Rivas uh, uh, bill, uh, the update bill that, that, that was passed um, back in uh, September and went into effect starting October 1st. Uh, the department sent out uh, communication out to the neighbor councils on October 8th regarding with the sample agenda template, which included AB 361 language to uh, be incorporated in neighborhood council agendas. Uh, it'll be one of the required languages as well. Uh, so please make sure to, to incorporate it into your, your agendas and committee agendas as well. Um, as uh, NC support will start to look into it in, in the future. Uh, I believe I emailed out the board as well the announcements. So uh, I did provide a link to the AB 361 updates and, and additional information, including the, the link to the agenda, sem uh, agenda sample template. Uh, for board members, again, please make sure to check your board member trainings. Uh, if your training has expired, uh, 
please go ahead and go into Cornerstone to renew it. If you come across any issues through Cornerstone, uh, communicate that over with uh, communications at empowerla.org. Uh, let them know what the issue is that you're coming across, especially if it is like in the middle of a training and it freezes or any point, let, let them know so that it can be addressed uh, and they can assist you on, on that end. Uh, also, if you've forgotten your username uh, or need to reset your credentials, let, uh, reach out to them. Uh, they'll be able to provide assistance on that as well. Uh, coming up, we do have the Core Institute Module 3 uh, session uh, scheduled for November 30th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, this is part of an ongoing uh, onboarding series uh, per the Board of Neighborhood, Board of Neighborhood Council's Commissioner's um, orientation leadership uh, policy. Uh, so the, during this, this session, you will learn about topics such as drafting agendas, community impact statements, and legislative, uh, the legislative process. Uh, again, I sent out email to the board. Uh, please make sure to RSVP. If you're not able to attend, uh, don't worry. You'll be, able, uh, you'll be able to have it on on-demand uh, access as well. Thank you, and, uh, That's it for, for my updates. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Jose. All right. Um, <clears throat> any other government officials? I Next? see none. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to the subject matter. Okay, so, oh, we have um, committee announcements. We'll kind of run through this. Uh, so we're just gonna run down all the committees, just kind of announce when your next meeting is, if you know, um, and anything else. Uh, executive committee, I have an announcement. Uh, everybody has to do this uh, able, ABLE training by the end of the month. And that's on the cornerstone thing. Otherwise you won't be able to vote in uh, December. Uh, what else? I think that's it. Oh, and then, um, yeah, we have our committee. So yeah, I really want all the committees to really like, you know, figure out a day of the month that they wanna hold their meetings monthly, you know, and then let me know. Um, Vince, do you have any uh, executive? No, I have none. Just uh, if you can just mention the date of our executive meeting, I think that's. Oh, you want me to? Oh, so it's like the first and third uh, Monday. Or Sunday, we haven't decided. Yeah, and I think you covered everything from my part. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then we'll move on to rules and bylaws. Uh, ben, Ben, any uh, info on your committee? One sec. Just uh, just a reminder that we we're all muted, so I got it takes a little while for them to unmute. Yeah. So let my cat in. Hold on. Uh, the, uh, the rules and bylaws committee will be meeting shortly. Oh, right. Thank you, Ben. Vince, what's the next committee? Sorry. Our next committee is going to be program and services or oh, budget and finance. Yeah, budget. budget and finance. Uh, we'll we'll be meeting soon as well as we're approaching the you know the new year. So we look to be meeting probably in in January or February. But look to the website for the posted date and the agenda. Yeah. We have MPG time. Yeah, and then uh, we have uh, programs and services next. Okay, programs and services. That's Gil and um, Victor. Give me one second. I don't see them. If you can raise your hand, that way I'll know if you got if you guys have uh, an announcement to make. We can unmute you. Okay, Gilbert. Give me one second. I kind of want to run through these kind of. We have a long agenda, kind of. Okay, can you, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, uh, we have a couple of items that has been made brought to my attention that we can take care of. And Victor, I had an email to you if you would get back to me so we can set up some dates. Cool. So, uh, what what day are you looking for your next meeting? Your last meeting was in September, right, Gil? I can, I'm available, as I said on the email to Victor, that I'm on, available any Thursday, any okay. Thursday. Any Thursday, okay, so I think, yeah, that's an open day. Just uh, choose which monthly Thursday you want, maybe. 
it's not the first or the yeah, third. And, and I think right now, since we don't have a date for it, I think we can say that uh, it'll be posted up on the website and sent out. And I think the, the chair should work out the date and time so that, you know, because right now we don't have it for the public. Yeah. Okay, so let's rock and roll. Let's keep moving on here. What Thank, are we you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Gail. So um, outreach and events. Nancy. Nancy and Annalie. I can, I'm going to mute Nancy and Annalie. Hi. Uh, we'll be meeting soon, I promise, um, within the next few weeks. And we also have a few seats available for anyone in the community that would like to be a part of the outreach committee. Um, should they email me or Fernanda? They would email you. Okay, great. So uh, yeah, if you're interested, please do email me. My, my email is nancy.soto, S-O-T-O, uh, LHNC, so Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council at gmail.com if you're interested in joining our outreach committee. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Mm -hmm. City and government liaison, Selena. Selena Ortega. She here? Yes. Hi. Hey. Um, so we were actually supposed to meet November 8th, but um, I had a, I, I've had to postpone that. Um, so we'll be meeting the second week of December. Okay, okay. Um, I don't have a set date yet, but when I'll let you guys know. I'll make sure to email everyone. Okay, cool. Thank you, Selena. And then we go to, oh, oh, that's you again, elections committee. Selena. Well. What? Sorry, can you unmute with Selena? Yeah. Uh, sorry, Selena. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. I feel like we're playing unmute tag. Um, <laughs> would, would the second week of December be too late to have an election committee meeting? Would I be able to have a joint? I mean, I know I can have a joint committee meeting, but I'm just not sure if the second week of December would be too late for that committee. I mean, no, I mean, I, we're, we have a, a general board meeting on December 2nd and December 16th, and then we have the holidays. So it's kind of, crunch time in there but with the elections committee Vince what's the the elections can like what's it look like on the horizon with the the spring elections yeah I think I think it'll it's fine if they meet in January because it's after the holidays and that's yeah. going to be the best time but once we get closer to the elections you should have more periodic election meetings because we got to figure out you know the type of advertisement and all the stuff we're going to do Got it. Okay, so then we'll just do, I'll just do a joint um, city and government liaison and election meeting the second week of December, and then we'll announce like the schedule for elections at that meeting, or come up with a plan at least. And this is for like the city, uh, city elections, correct? Yeah, yes. town hall. So if just to inform everybody, yeah, the neighborhood council hosts uh, these uh, town halls, right, with all of the uh, people running for uh, CD1 or CD14 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it would, uh, yeah. So the elections committee, if you want to join that committee and have a part in that, uh, email Selena. It's selena.lhnc at gmail.com. Yep. Okay. So uh, the next one, planning and land use committee, that's me um, and Benny. Pluck committee. Okay. So the members, we have to do this planning class by the end of the year, but I don't think it's available yet. Uh, the hearing, wait, what, what happened? Yeah, we had a hearing and it, it went well, the flat top. Um, and then we're looking, yeah, for community uh, stakeholders who wanna join the planning and land use committee uh, board. So just email me. Uh, okay, that's Sarah, S-A-R-A dot L-H-N-C at protonmail.com. So next we have the holiday parade committee. That's Anna Lee and Richard Ortiz. Okay, so Richard, I don't see Anna Lee in the room anymore. So I'm gonna pass it on to Richard. Okay. Hello, hello. Hey. Yes. <clears throat> uh, 
I haven't spoken to Anna Lee. We haven't really sat down and spoke to about this and got into okay. actual well, that's soft plan. If you don't, if you don't know, you know, if you want to wait. Pretty much, yes. Because okay. there's a lot of the competition right now. <laughs> oh right. Yeah. So then we'll move on to the next one, uh, sustainability committee. Sustainability currently right now is still working on a on a date, and I will reach out to Diego so we can set our, our first meeting. We have uh, our items for the agenda already, just as an introduction, like some of the other uh, committees. And we also, too, have room on our committee for stakeholders, and they can reach out to anybody on the committee, including myself or Diego. My email is uh, Vincent uh, M. Dot L. Lincoln Heights, LHNC at gmail.com if you would like to join the uh, sustainability committee. And I don't know if, if uh, Diego has anything to add on to that. Let me uh, unmute him. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, and yeah, my email is Diego Zapata dot, uh, LHNC at gmail.com. You can also reach out to me. Uh, and I'd also welcome the public to send us any agenda items for the next uh, committee meeting after our first introductory meeting. Um, I'd like to get a lot of work done with this committee once we start meeting. Okay, so I like to hear. Ooh. Where are we at now? Tenants' Rights Ad Hoc Committee, Fernanda Sanchez. No meeting set just yet. Still working on the resource material to hand out. Um, it's all the update I have. And if the public wants to become a part of your committee, any stakeholders want to join, they can hit you up at a... They can email me at fernanda.sanchezlhnc at gmail.com. Excellent. Okay, move on to the next one. Uh, ARC liaison, that's Alliance of River Communities. Uh, we had our, <clears throat> our meeting was canceled for the month of November. So we don't have a report, but we do look forward to the month of December where there's a couple of lineups already with like um, Pascal Del Rio and possible like the 100 acre partnership. So I think it'll be a good meeting for people to come to and get some, in, you know, get some updates on some of the projects that are happening around. So we hope to see you there and uh, you can go to the ARC Facebook page. And I know that ARC, we're currently working on even a, a website so you'd be able to find all the information and agendas there. So we hope to see everybody. Uh, I don't know if Diego had something to add. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, so we'll move on to uh, the LGBT liaison. That's um, Diana Trump. One second. There we go. Okay. Hello. Um, so I already did my presentation last meeting. We haven't had any meetings since, but we will have one in probably within the next week, uh, the next uh, two weeks or something. Okay, cool. And that's the uh, Echo Park. It's an Echo Park group, right? Uh, oh, you're muted. Echo, Echo Park area? Yeah. Let's see. Ah. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay. So now we move on to the items, the big ones. Well, Diana's right, waving her hands around. <laughs> Unmute that girl. Sorry. Um, no, it's not an Echo Park thing. It's um the it's the Los Angeles uh Alliance, right? Yeah, all, all neighborhood council. So we have people from um all over, uh, but uh, of course from the neighborhood councils, and then some. Okay, cool. so it's not just an Echo Park thing. Yeah, just wanted to correct that. That first guy, I think you said he was from Echo Park Neighborhood Council, and then for some reason I thought that they hosted it. Oh. But now I see. Oh, yeah, totally. I get that. No. Thank you. Thank no, you I'm going to make an announcement. Okay, so presentations number seven, subject QA with Jimmy Gomez. I'm going to make a couple like amendments to this agenda. Um, yeah, so uh, Jimmy, last minute, he had a meeting or, you know, had to go vote. So um, he couldn't come to the meeting, but they're going to come to the next meeting on, uh, you know, the next meeting is December 2nd. So that's in a couple weeks. And then, yeah, either that one or December 16th, but I'm pretty sure he'll be here on the 2nd. 
Um, and then I'm going to table uh, agenda item eight because uh, our outreach committee meeting was canceled today. So, and those are the, the changes. So um, next we will move on to item, so we're skipping item 7A. So we will move to item 7B, oh yeah, 7B, De uh, Department of Toxic Substances Control, DTSC. It's regarding the Avenue 34 project. Uh, presenter Jessica Swan, DTSC, and Michael Hayden. Is Michael Hayden here? Uh, I see Jessica Swan. Oh, there's Michael Hayden. Oh yeah, C could you bring Michael Hayden and Jessica Swan into the speaker speaker realm? Okay. And then they both have uh, presentations. And um, let's see. So this is um, about the Avenue 34 <laughs> raw removal action work plan uh, for the site with the contaminant. So should, should we have Jessica go first and then Michael? Uh, yeah, sure. And then what's our time on it? We were giving um, me like, uh, we can put, let's give each one two minutes. Um, Michael, do you think we, well, let's see, uh, Jessica, how long is your presentation? Could you unmute her? Should we just unmute everybody again? Uh, I'm going to have a a slightly difficult time trying to condense that into two minutes. <laughs> Likewise. <Sorry>. Okay. <laughs> so Jessica, what, what would you need? Uh, well. <laughs> oh yeah, two minutes, Vince. What is that? Uh, okay. I mean, 10 would be nice. Oh, I'll take nice. five and chop everything out. Um, you know take what I can what I can get I was invited here by you guys so I invited Jessica to do a little, a little presentation okay, so let, let's do the presentation I mean we've cut out we've cut out a couple items out of the agenda we've cut out two items um this DTSC thing's a big deal um and so is you know and then we'll just uh, give the same amount of time to the Chick-fil-a item and then uh that's it yeah Okay, so I'll just set the timer for 10. Okay. And then Jessica needs, do you, so with the visuals, Jessica, mm -hmm. do you, um, so we have the visuals on our website. We, is that what we should show? Uh, I actually made some slight updates. Uh, so if I can share. Oh, you're going to screen share, right? Yeah, if I can share, okay. that'd be great. And plus, um, we talked about uh, going over to EnviroStore and checking out uh, those resources. So. so Jessica, I just moved you over to panelists and I'm going to see once you're there if I can give you access to sharing. Super, thank you. Okay, here you are, let me. Okay, I made you a, a co-host if you accept it. Okay, so everybody knows this is um, item uh, 7B, uh, Avenue 34 DTSC uh, presentation. With Jessica, Jessica did, did you get a prompt to become a co-host? Oh, hold on. I got the prompt for panelists, not the prompt for co-host. Okay, let me reset. Oh, I bet I have a screen share option. So um, let me go ahead and do that. Okay. Let me let me stop. Okay, I think I have to stop screen sharing on my site. Oh, no, you got it. Good. Yep. Uh, presentation. All right. What? Hold on. Is it not going to let me do what I want? Hold on. I might have to just do it this way. Um, okay. Can you all see that? <laughs> yes. Looks good. All right, 
So uh, thanks again. My name is Jessica Swan. I am from the Department of Toxic Substances Control. I am the Public Participation Specialist and the Project Contact for Avenue 34 Project. Um, so again, uh, your lovely president, Sarah, uh, asked me to provide you some information about what DTSC does uh, and the um, current public comment period that we're in for the Avenue 34 project. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so first, I want to talk about the steps of a cleanup. So the first step in a cleanup is getting an agreement from the responsible party. The other name that we call them might be a proponent. Um, you know, those are interchangeable terms. So this agreement allows us to hold the responsible party accountable for the investigation and potential cleanup of a site. Um, the agreement that is at the Avenue 34 project is a standard voluntary agreement. Uh, this can also be referred to as a voluntary cleanup agreement or VCA. Um, and it's just, an, it's a, a standard agreement. And this pays for the oversight costs or TSC for again, the investigation and cleanup and ensures the financial assurances for the site in the long run. So next we move on uh, after the agreement to the evaluation process, and this can have several steps. And the first one is generally always a phase one site assessment. And this phase one site assessment is always going to be a just document review essentially, where they're looking for area, where they're looking at the historical documentation to determine where to investigate. So where there might be historical, um, historic potential for contamination. And from that phase one site assessment, they move it, um, a phase two site assessment is done. And that's where you actually see sampling uh, get done at the site. And that's again, based on the information found in phase one. So generally after phase two, um, you know, there's a need to do more sampling um, to find out the boundaries of the contamination. And that's under a supplemental site investigation. So then once all of the supplemental site investigations and uh, other in the phase one and phase two are completed, um, we can generally get a site characterization. And this is a report that compiles all of the information from those investigations uh, so that we can make a determination about the site. Um, so after the evaluation phase, we can move into remedy selection. So that's the phase that we're in right now. Um, and the document for this specific site is a removal action work plan. It's also known as a RAW. Um, and so again, once the site characterization is done, we can start assessing cleanup. Uh, we use the RAW to assess the cleanup options for the chemicals that are found at the site. So again, this is the document that we are requesting your participa participation on. And we'll talk more about um, how uh, you can you all can participate with us um, in this process a little bit later. So uh, next would be so if the raw is approved after the public comment period, after we finalize it, uh, you know if it gets approved, we go into the actual implementation of the cleanup, uh, and then once the cleanup is completed, um, we move on to certification and stewardship. And this is where confirmation sampling is done to determine if the cleanup goals were met. Um, sometimes more cleanup is needed. Sometimes um, we will do land use restrictions, operation and maintenance plans. Sometimes we do reviews after five years. And for certain sites, a no further action or a certificate of completion can be given at, at phase. Um, so, how to participate. 
Uh, so we're currently in the comment period for the Avenue 34 project for that raw removal action work plan document that I was telling you all about. Uh, and that started on November 10th and runs through December 20th. So please submit all comments by December 20th. Um, we will also have a public meeting. DTSC is hosting a public meeting on December 1st, 2021 at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Please reach out to me if you need the link or if you need the phone number for that, um, I will get that to you. That will be translated. Uh, translation for Spanish and Mandarin will be available for that meeting. And below in the little boxes here, I have the different ways that you can submit comments for the raw. So this is the ma this is the major way that you can participate and help us make a decision on this document. So if you want to go ahead and take your phone out right now and scan this QR code, um, that will take you to a survey monkey that you can submit your public comment. You can also email Luis Garcia, who is our um, project manager, or um, by old fashioned USPS mail. So I will be sending out a, uh, you should be receiving a postcard in the mail with a reminder about the meeting that's coming up. Um, I will also be sending an email to our email contact list. The email will include the QR code. Um, and the original mail out for our community update, which notified folks of the public comment period included a comment form with a postage paid envelope. So, um, Again, if you have any questions on any aspect of commenting, um, you can reach out to me if you need information on how to join the meeting. Um, you can contact me. And again, we'll be sending out the reminder email uh, and the reminder postcard should be in uh, mailboxes shortly. So now we're gonna talk about some of the navigation tools that DTSC, I'm sorry, we're gonna be navigating some of the online tools that DTSC has available. Um, so the EnviroStore page is where we host all of the documents for all of our sites. And so this is an online resource where you're going to be able to find the actual raw document. So the document that we're talking about, the document that we're requesting public participation on, this is where you're gonna find it. I think I'm gonna have to stop screen sharing and um, re-screen share this. Give me a second. Okay. So like, yeah, this is a DTSC, right? Like EnviroStore is the DTSC site, right? So you, yes. It's a mapping Correct. site. So you can see all of the contaminated sites from above. Correct. So and I'll go through, a couple, so there's a couple of different ways to find the site. Um, you can type in Pasadena Avenue and it'll show up right there. And you click on it and it'll take you to the site. If you memorize this site code right here, 603112, you can type it in uh, and it'll take you to the site. Um, and the third way, oop, okay. Oh no, it's taking you to the map. It took me to the site earlier. Okay, third way is to just type in Avenue 34 into this search box, hit enter, and it's gonna take you to a map of Los Angeles, maybe? Yes, okay, super. Um, and we're gonna zoom in. And so right where this arrow is, it's showing you uh, the, where Avenue 34, the actual uh, street is. And then right above it is the little orange dot where the site is. Um, each of the, if you, I'm going to zoom back out really quickly. Yeah, and didn't show the magnitude of the dots like of LA. Like, I don't know if it really shows it, but yeah. So those are all, you know, spots that are kind of um, contaminated or under investigation. And then, and then there's a key on the left-hand side, color-coded. But this does not include oil sites, correct? Um, Right, there's some sites that are not included. If they're, sometimes if they're not under our jurisdiction, they're not gonna be under 
but on this map, um, oil wells are not necessarily going to be on this map. Um, so it just is um, a lot of times on what our jurisdiction, what is under our jurisdiction. Yeah. So, um, and again, as Sarah mentioned, on this side, you can see different, um, a different um, color-coded site um, descriptions. So I'm gonna zoom in here. We're gonna go to Avenue 34. Okay. And click on the blue link to get to the actual page. And then from here, this is the landing page for the Avenue 34 site. Um, and uh, the two main um, areas that I wanna show you are the site and facility documents, which are right here. Um, so this, this link right here is the actual uh, link to the removal action work plan, raw. Um, these are all, these are the investigations, site characterization work plan, um, community update that we sent out, different document standard agreement. All of those documents are in here. Um, but this site characterization work plan, site characterization report and the removal action work plan is going to be uh, essentially an inclusive report that has the site characterization. So all of those investigations that were done as well as the proposed cleanup plan in it. And that's what we're requesting uh, your review of. So it is a lengthy, length, lengthy document. I apologize. Uh, so if anybody, you know, this, basically these files show, they did soil borings into the ground. Uh, Different, different depths. I think like, what's the deepest? Like 50 feet or something. Um, but it shows the core sample, like all the elements that they found inside all of the contamination, contaminants and whatever, PCE yeah. and the levels. Yes. Yeah. So you can go through and a lot of the top part is mostly like the site characterization and the, um, the, the studies that were done. The second part of it is going to be the actual, like, uh, um, raw information where they're evaluating the different cleanup um, options. And then below all of that is where you're going to have like a bunch of figures where you can see you'll have all of like the sampling reports. Um, all of like the maps and the figures for the um, for the data, and we'll discuss this a little bit more at the meeting as well um, about what you know what the different maps look like and kind of how to orient um, orient yourself on those. So I just wanted to show you that, and then the last thing that I want to show you on here is Calum Virus Screen. Yeah, that's a good. So, this is a really cool tool that was developed by uh, Kalawiha, the Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment. And this gives, so on this page, so this is for specifically Avenue 34 again, and this gives specific statistics about the community that surrounds Avenue 34 or the census district that, specifically the census district that's around Avenue 34. And so there's a lot of good information on here. Um, and about uh, your guys' community, because again, you guys are, are in a, right next door. 96 um, to 100th percentile highest scores of, of pollution burdens. It's 99th percentile, 89% uh, poverty. Now you're saying this is based off a of census, right? And this is based off the census tract right there. Right. 134. Right. So I'll go into it a little bit. Um, just one that I use um, for my job is the linguistic isolation. So this tool I use to determine to or to help me determine there is one way that we determine how to um, like what languages to translate information into for communities. Um, another way is is survey data. But in the app, you know, before we do that, 
we use this. So oop, too much. So if we go over to, uh, here we go. So here we are at Avenue 34. And then you can click on in the area and you can read information about the census tract based on what um, different category that you're in. Also type in a specific address. And it will take you to there. And then you can click on the census tract from there. So you don't have to actually do what I did and try to find, try to orient yourself on the map based on Dodger Stadium. <laughs> okay, so those are some cool, those are, um, Kalawiha, uh, I got lost in there in my first, you know, the first time I looked in there, it's a, it's a great tool to use, um, has a lot of great information. Envirostore, again, is where you're going to be able to find a lot of, uh, find the information on the site specifically, um, and all of the sites that we work on. Um, and then moving on to my last slide, which I don't know if we have time for this. Some of the words and acronyms that you might hear or see tonight or during our presentation uh, on December 1st. Um, VOC stands for Volatile Organic Compound. Um, my notes, so I don't, wait, you aren't seeing my presentation, I apologize. Now this is really important, VOCs are mm -hmm. Let me get back to my presentation for you all. And okay. so volatile organic compounds are a group of chemicals and they let off gas at room temperature. Um, these chemicals we come into contact every day throughout our everyday life. They're household cleaners, hairspray, uh, and gasoline, among others. And they're also found in industrial products, which we'll see. PCE, which the technical name is tetrachloroethylene, uh, and was one of the primary chemicals found at the site, is a type of VOC, and it's found in solvents that are often used in engine decreasers. TCE stands for trichloroethylene, uh, and it, again, it's also a VOC and it's found in cleaning products used for furniture care products and automotive care products like brake cleaners. And these two products are also um, sometimes used in dry cleaning products. CR plus six is hexavalent chromium. Uh, and it is a chemical compound of chromium and it is often used in chrome plating for um, prevent metals from rusting. Uh, TPH stands for total petroleum hydrocarbons. And that is just a group of chemicals that um, is found with the use of petroleum products. So gas, diesel, crude oil. Um, and I mentioned these because these are some of the chemicals that were found on site. Um, so Again, we talk, uh, so DTSC acronym, I threw it out there a couple of times, I know, and I apologize. It stands for the Department of Toxic Substances Control. It's the department that I work for, and it's the agency that regulates the storage, transportation, and cleanup of hazardous waste, among other things. Um, so VCA, again, Voluntary Cleanup Agreement. Um, and the RAW, the Removal Action Work Plan. Um, and then the last one that I wanna talk about, uh, Sarah and I talked about this the other day, a super fun and orphan sites. So I wanted to make a clarification. A super fun site uh, is just a site. It's a, a super fun is a colloquial name for a site under the CERCLA law. So CERCLA stands for Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act. Uh, this is a federal law that established the authority for the federal government to tax hazardous waste producers, um, create requirements for closed and, ab and abandoned hazardous waste sites, 
and um, to create a trust fund, AKA super fund. And that is to clean up sites that do not have a responsible party. So we also have, um, we also have a fund in the state of California for sites. We, uh, we just call them orphan sites. And so we have a fund to clean up some sites that are in the state of California that do not have a responsible party. Oh, um, parents, it's an orphan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's <laughs> it doesn't have anybody to pay for it. Um, so, yeah, so that's what that is. And I apologize for uh, my misquote on our call the other the other day, but um, Superfund is just a colloquial name and it's based on the funding mechanism to pay for these actual site cleanups. Okay, last slide. Uh, so this is where you can get more information. Again, I gave this presentation to uh, your president, so it, it should be available on your website. Mm -hmm. um, this is the link to specifically the EnviroStore webpage for EnviroStore. Um, this is the link to the Avenue, the DTSC Avenue 34 website. And that is where we will be posting um, the translated copies, well, the, the English, Spanish, and Chinese uh, versions of the presentation for the December 1st um, presentation. And I hope to have those up on, just on November 29th. Um, so you can find information in person. So if you don't have a computer, you, you, if you know somebody who doesn't have a computer or somebody who just wants the material in their hand, we do have two information repositories where you can find the information. Um, and that is at the Chatsworth Regional Office. Obviously that's very far from you guys. So uh, the other one is in at the Lincoln Heights Branch Library. Um, TSC contacts, again, Luis Garcia, our project manager, and myself. So that's all I have for you. I Thank apologize you. if I took forever. Thank you, Jessica. So, um, Sarah, do we go straight to Michael? Let's go straight to Michael. Michael, and, is, Michael is Michael going to need access to the uh, share screen? Yeah, I think so. Michael? Is he muted? Yeah, he might be muted. Give me one second. The attendee side. I've seen him. Okay, so this will be Michael Hayden from Lincoln Heights Community Coalition. I don't see him in. Uh, oh, he's on this side. Give me a second. Okay. I had moved him over to panelist time. Hi. Yeah, I would like. I've got a slide presentation prepared also. Okay. We'll share screen, Michael's screen. Give me one second. Can I go ahead and start that? I have to give you co-host. You have to accept the co-host. Okay. Hey. And it'll give you access to the screen. Okay. All right. Um, thank you guys for having me. Um, I'm gonna share my screen here. Okay. Are you guys seeing this? Yes. Okay. So um, I just wanted to say um, that I have been reviewing the, uh, the raw and also the site characterization report um, and also been doing it with the help of several experts, including geologists and former uh, government officials um, for both the city of LA and the state of California. And um, there's lots of uh, glaring omissions and holes in both the site characterization and the cleanup that I wanted to share. Um, every decision in the developer's cleanup proposal um, for Avenue 34 is designed to save them as much time and money as possible. They're trying to stick to a predetermined schedule at the cost of our neighborhood safety and they say as much in their uh, proposals to DTSC. Um, that's not what makes a cleanup plan a good one. Uh, this cleanup continues a long history of environmental racism that Lincoln Heights has suffered for decades. The contamination on this block sickened school children and families in the past. And as 
as Jessica shared with um, Cal and Viruscreen, um, Lincoln Heights is one of the most polluted neighborhoods in all of Los Angeles. We've got to demand a full investigation and cleanup so that our community is not sickened again. Um, Avenue 34 is a massively contaminated property. We knew the property next door, which was called Welch's, used to be America's largest industrial dry cleaner, which had massive spills of toxic waste. Um, and that's what led us to suspect that Avenue 34 was probably contaminated too. The Avenue 34 property used to be an electronics manufacturing factory for ITT Cannon, which likely used lots of the same toxic chemicals used for dry cleaning. And they operated other facilities in Lincoln Heights also, which also polluted our neighborhood. So they have a history. Um, for these reasons, we didn't believe that the developers repeated lies that they had tested the site and shown that it was free of contamination. Here's a site from their website as it appeared until recently. Um, some of you may remember visiting this website and they said um, the same thing they said here at the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council and they repeated this lie at, um, at the city planning uh, appeal hearings and other venues where they constantly said, we've done 30 soil borings that indicate that there's no subsurface contamination. The site is not contaminated. Um, they had actually never tested the site and finally acknowledged that when they signed the voluntary agreement with DTSC this year. Um, uh, Jessica Swan mentioned the phase one as the first step in this sort of um, investigation. Um, their phase one included this line that says the groundwater flows away from the property in a west. Did we lose him? Is that Mike? No. He's still there, but he might he might have just lost oh, northwest we... direction when they're talking about well. Oh, wait, Hi, can you see? It's kind of cutting out a little. Oh no. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you now. Okay. The other um, part. This is a good part. Okay, so yeah, the uh, the phase one that they used for their environmental review lied about the groundwater direction, claiming that pollution was flowing away from their property rather than directly through it as it actually does. And they used this lie to evade testing for contamination up until our community finally demanded it. They've lied to our community and to our government, hoping to build this you know, immensely profitable project, not caring how it might affect the lives of the people who live here or even about their future tenants. Um, we finally convinced, and of course, uh, I just want to share a slide that shows um, Welch's site, the Avenue 34 site, the groundwater flow dragging the known toxic waste from Welch's towards um, Avenue 34, and the close proximity of schools. We have Hillside Elementary across the street, and we have a total of five schools within, I believe, about 1,200 feet, the LA Leadership Academy um, Elementary School is just outside this map. Um, but we've got Florence Nightingale, Loretto, Hillside, and Los Angeles Theater Academy High School. Uh, we finally convinced DTSC in March to require testing on the property. The site is incredibly polluted. Uh, this is a screenshot of the VOCs, the principal uh, VOCs in soil gas. Um, there are dozens of toxins identified, included pollution in the groundwater, uh, metals in the soil like lead, chromium, and mercury, and incredibly dangerous levels of vapor spread out across the entire property, both in the deep and the shallow soil. Um, dangerous levels of vapors were found at every single sampling location across the entire property. The most recent tests found levels of PCE um, of 640,000 micrograms per cubic meter. The residential screening limit is 15. Um, so that is calculated to create a risk to residents 41,000 times higher than what is allowed. Mm. That's very high. That's over in the upper west side of the property, correct? That's uh, actually, those are sort of uh, northwest, but more towards the center. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a blue dot. Um, yeah, sort of not right at the very top corner, but down a little bit. Yeah, I see the 64,000 there. Yeah, wow. yeah. Second one. 600, 640,000. Oh, 640,000. Yeah, it's, it's high. Uh, there are also levels of TCE and petroleum hydrocarbons thousands of times higher than what's safe for residences. And these vapors are dangerous because they can move freely through the soil 
and then rise up into neighboring homes, businesses, and schools. When people breathe them in, they can cause a host of health issues, including cancer, brain damage, vision failure, immune disorders, birth defects, too much to list. Um, now, I made a few maps here. This is a slide where the blue dots represent every point on the property that was sampled for toxic vapors. On the next slide, I'm gonna show which ones had positive results for levels that are unsafe for residences. Oh, it was all of them. Um, toxic vapors at levels unsafe for residential use were found at every sampling location. And um, contrary to what you know, Jessica Swan said that in a phase two, one of the objectives is to, through testing, determine the boundaries of the contamination so that you can get a picture of how far the contamination has traveled. The investigation that they've done on this property has not determined the boundaries of the contamination. The contamination is in the center, it's at the edges of the property, and we don't know what it's like off site. So the principal um, solution that the developers have proposed is uh, removing soil. And the soil they plan to remove without remediating it first is, the same, is mostly the same soil that they already plan to remove for their parking lot. So they're essentially jumping right into their construction phase and calling that removal, that excavation for their parking lot, the soil removal cleanup. That would leave the following points all on the next slide unaddressed and still with levels too high for residences. We lost about four points and those are all points where they had only sampled at five feet. So of course the, the excavation would take care of those but we don't know what's deeper. And every other point represents something that will be either directly under the parking lot or directly under the apartment buildings or directly to the side of the parking lot and continuing to be pose a risk to the project and to the surrounding neighborhood. Their parking lot and their apartments will sit inches above massive levels of vapors. Um, and now most disturbingly is just in their most recent testing, they identified sewers that run through the property um, that won't be, uh, the, the excavation isn't gonna hit these sewers also. So they won't be addressed by, by the cleanup they've proposed. And there, there are massive levels of contamination of vapors right next to the sewer lines. Uh, the developers in their, in their characterization of the site say that they believe the vapors originated on site at clarifiers next to these sewers and are traveling through leaky sewer pipes. And the developer's document also concludes that nearby, and this is a quote, nearby residents and businesses are subject to vapor intrusion exposure. And that's exactly what we've been afraid of all along. This is a document from DTSC's vapor intrusion guidance called Utility Corridor Decision Tree. And it's a step-by-step -step so that you can see, you know, it's like a forking paths, like yes or no to each one, and it tells you what to do. We're currently at the point that I've circled down here where it says, are utility corridors potentially a preferential migration pathway? Well, the recent report that DTSC um, is asking us to review says quite plainly, yes, they are. They think that vapors originating on site are likely traveling through the sewers. And they say that current nearby residents are subject to vapor intrusion exposure. So you follow that yes arrow down. And the next thing it says is conduct field investigation of utility corridors. Um, it's very clear that once the risk of vapors traveling along underground utilities is identified, you must investigate the utilities for vapors following the testing offsite as far as necessary. DTSC says in their guidance documents that it is impossible to calculate or predict how far or easily vapors will travel in such cases. We know that sometimes they travel for miles. However, DTSC has said they will not test offsite and they're not investigating the sewers. They've said they'll, they'll um, further investigate during the soil removal, but the soil removal doesn't actually hit all of these sewer lines um, at all. We have a right to know what risks we are being exposed to, and it's dangerous that DTSC is not following their own rules when they know our lives could be in danger. I should point out that these sewer lines go directly across the street and are continuing right in the direction of the homes on this block. 
So like I, like I mentioned, the developers are proposing to remove mostly just the same soil they already plan to remove to make their underground parking lot. They won't do anything to clean up that soil first, and they won't remove most of the soil on the rest of the property, even though it's highly polluted. Normally, DTSC requires extracting vapors from the ground first with pumps. On Welch's just next door, they required 11 extraction wells within a few hundred square feet to operate for nearly two years. After they stopped extracting the vapors, they said they would require an agreement from the landowner to never let anyone live on that property. At Avenue 34, they're only committing to one vapor extraction well in a corner, which might operate while construction commences. It'll be placed in a far corner of the property, far from homes and schools, and not in the center of the property where most of the highest levels of vapors have been identified. Welch's has been under investigation or cleanup for more than 30 years now, and it's currently much cleaner than Avenue 34 might be when it's occupied if this plan goes ahead. Why this huge discrepancy? We all need to demand for a full vapor extraction plan across the property, not just along the perimeter. It must be proven to be successful and complete before soil removal or construction starts. They've already said that if they do any more vapor extraction wells, they'll be placed on the perimeter of the property so that clearly, so it won't impede their construction, but that's completely backwards. We need to be thinking about where the concentrations of vapors are, addressing those first, and um, not putting the timetable or budget of this huge profit-making project ahead of the efficiency and successfulness of a cleanup plan. I, I implore everyone here, please reach out to our local officials, to DTSC, to our elected representatives, we need to demand first a full investigation of how these toxins are traveling off site and what danger they pose to our neighborhood. The investigation of the site has not been completed despite what DTSC has approved. And therefore it's premature to, to move into the, the cleanup phase. And um, I also you know, wanna thank Jessica for sharing about EnviroStore, it is an incredibly helpful site. And it's um, once you get the hang of it, it's not that hard to navigate. Um, DTSC has been uh, responsive to posting our community's concerns on this site because we've written several um, long and very well-researched letters to DTSC. Um, they've posted most of them, but recently we wrote a very long one in response to this plan which DTSC responded to with their own answers. Um, they haven't posted that, that letter online to my knowledge. And the response they sent to us redacted the first page of text that we had written. Um, so I'd like to just uh, call on DTSC to make sure they do post that. I know that Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council posted that document to their website a few weeks ago. Um, and if DTSC would like to post the one, even if it's, you know, they should post the one with their comments. Um, but please do post it with um, the entire unredacted text. Um, and uh, I think that's all for right now. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Wow, that was a great presentation. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, so I guess, you know what, I'm gonna switch it up. We could go to community um, discussion. Vince, can we do community and then board? Cause I, I don't want the board to hog it all up. Vince? Bernie, Vince, who's at the wheel here? I think he might be having... Yeah, no, so sorry about that. I had myself muted. I'm talking to my own screen. Uh -oh. hey, Vince, <laughs> I'm saying since, since we've already had the, the, um, the presentations, people actually have questions. So I think if we keep it to a certain amount of time, let's say we give the response like at least a minute if someone asks a question and have one per board member and then one per whoever in the community has should it. Start, should we start with the community first or the board members first? Well, we can go with community. We can put them ahead of us. Or bounce back and forth. I just don't like the you know, board members kind of like framing, you know, talking amongst themselves and then the community gets left out. No, no, we can do a community and then the board members. That's fine. Okay. Um, so let's, let me go. Are, we're not putting no time restriction on them or we should? Um, I guess we have to get to, we have, um, just a couple more items. I mean, we just have two bigger items. They're not even big items. I mean, okay, so so let's just make sure that the one bigger item. Is a small item. Let's just make sure that the presenters, Michael and uh, Sarah, no, excuse me, Jessica, Jessica, that if we can keep our responses to a minimum, so we can get through everybody. 
and then to the best of your ability, because I know it's hard to put stuff in small sentences. So when you have a whole page you have to put on. Right. Uh, let's start with first Rosalio Munoz. Rosalio. Excuse me, Rosalio. <laughs> okay. Hey, Rosalio. Hi, I'm Rosalio Munoz from uh, Epiphany Church, and I uh, have lived on and off and all around Lincoln Heights since 1950 when we moved there to uh, Avenue 23. But I'm very concerned with Hillside. Well, I have three points. One, I think uh, because of the language uh, differences and, and where there are people who, uh, well, have more difficulty with language uh, and in their, and their actually education level as well that a good petition that is uh, good in layman's terms in many languages uh, would be very good to take out to the community, maybe the outreach group or whatever, in terms of concerns that were raised in this last report in particular. I'm very much concerned about Hillside School. There are the other schools that are fairly near but that's just up the hill, just right across the street. And how many children are there? And what is there, what is, uh, the, how immediate is that danger? That's something we should find out, I think, right away. And just another thing may not be anything, but then we have Artesia Street pretty close to there. And it, are there artesian wells or is there water besides the sewer, any other ways? that, uh, that uh, the contamination can be spread uh, further. Those are my concerns. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our next is uh, email CT Williams 2001. Please state your name for the record. CT. And just give me one second, hello. If you can state your name for the record, let me. Now that that one shows that he may be having technical difficulties on his hand. Um, we should come back to him. Okay. Okay. Um, our next one is the number ending in six eight two. If you can please unmute yourself and state your name. Good evening, uh, Dr. Tom Williams again. So uh, from El Sereno. However, my background goes into the Union Station where we had a similar contaminated mess. Also the Cornfields Arroyo Seco Park, it's a contaminated mess. That's why they have only a park on it. Also Taylor Yard, the railroad started it, but I say the industries have kept it going for a long time, since the 1920s. And there are historic aerial photographs showing, showing such. The raw is totally deficient. It doesn't tell you where the materials are going to go once they're excavated. It doesn't tell you much of anything about what has to be done. And I say I was party to the Wilshire Courtyard Preservation because they had similar major problems on Wilshire at Fairfax. But the basic element is here that if this goes forward with the current documents, uh, get ready for a lawsuit because it's a classic uh, minimal exercise in doing hazmat remediation. So I've been in it, I've done it, I know what needs to be done and this doesn't do it. So uh, we'll see you later. Uh, by the way, uh, Citizens Coalition for Safe Community, we started 12 years ago on the Inglewood oil field and we're still operating it. So it can be done, can be done right, and can be done to protect the community. So that's all. Thank you. Yeah. Our next uh, speaker is Mr. Adams. Please state your name for the record. 
Uh, yeah, this is Christian Adams. Um, first, uh, I had two questions. First was for uh, Jessica. Um, in her her um, presentation, she said the uh, an agreement needs to be needs to uh, we need to come to an agreement as to who is the party responsible. So that would be the first question. Has an agreement been made as to the party responsible? Um, second, I wanted to say thank you for to Michael for the information because it's really eye opening, eye opening, and pretty terrifying to hear the the results from these testing. Um, how does an how does an investigation go on for thirty years without anyone held accountable? And where did the public updates go throughout the decades? Um, and that that's just probably the biggest concern because um, had it not been for the new face of Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council and their steps in getting the community more involved, I'm sure this is going to come to an even greater surprise to, as other people mentioned, that the, the, the language barrier in communicating to our Mandarin and Spanish speakers of the severity of the contamination and pollution of these sites that are seeping into the community without anybody's knowledge or the knowledge of some, because obviously an investigation has been going on for 30 years, you know? So um, just I want to point it there. Thank you. Jessica, did you want to answer? Thank you, Mr. Adams. Yeah, thank you for your question. So the agreement phase again is the beginning phase. This is a an agreement between DTSC and a and a proponent for for a particular site. So, um, for this particular site, I, the developer um, wanted to develop on the site, and in order to do so, um, they needed to they need to have our approval in order to make sure that it is safe for health, human health and the environment before any uh, land use changes can be made. Um, so I did want to address the second part of your question. So I believe there, I want to just make a very, a, so there's two, there's two properties that are being discussed and oftentimes they're conflated. So there's the north, so the property boundary to the north um, touches Welch's. So I believe that is the one that you may be speaking about that has had the investigation for over 30 years or um, I don't have all the details on that. The property that we're speaking about today is the Avenue 34 property um, that is below the Welch's property um, between Pasadena, the Gold Line, and Avenue 34. Um, so those are different properties. But to be clear, there it there has been the history of that site does go back for hundreds of years, obviously. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, our, our next uh, speaker is going to be uh, Jab Sprague. Please state your name for the record. Hello, my name is Jab. Yeah. Um, okay, I have a question for for uh, Mrs. Swan. Uh, on the on the um, uh, what's the name? Enviro Store database website on the site information um, status says uh, it shows cleanup status is active as of 8-16-2019. and on site tape also uh, shows voluntary cleanup. Could you please uh, explain what? what those uh, two terms uh, means, and also what kind of active uh, clean uh, cleanup um, is going on on the on this site. Please. Sorry about that. Cleanup status being active just means that it's an active site. So the designations that will go there are, and I have, my supervisor on here and she can help me out, <laughs> but um, are inactive, active, um, and I believe there might be another one. So that just means that we're currently looking at that site. Um, that does not mean that we are in, that we're <laughs> like cleaning it up at this time. That's not, that's not what 
that means. Um, so again, right now, the phase that we're in are, is in the remediation selection phase uh, where we are selecting, uh, um, soliciting for public comment. And if you could just give me the other part of your question again. Yeah, the other one is, uh, see, uh, it, it says on a site uh, type, uh, it shows voluntary cleanup. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what we were talking about a little bit earlier, the type of agreement that it is. So, uh, so this is a voluntary cleanup agreement. Other things that you might see for different sites would be a school, uh, school site cleanup. Um, and I am uh, blanking on a lot of these, but it's just the type of, of designation that we get it, give to uh, the different um, cleanups. So if you remember from that map that I showed you, all of the different color variations, um, those are those are the different site cleanups that might be listed under site type. Thank you, Jessica. Our next uh, our next speaker is going to be with the last number zero four six. If you can please state your name for the record. Zero four six. Yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, it's Annalise. It's me. I well, because I, I just want. I was trying to comment uh, when we we're doing the uh, committees, but because I had to switch to the phone, so I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm on the phone. So for any voting, anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and and just to let you know, Annalie, I can't for some reason when you guys call in with numbers, I can't switch you over to panelists, but I know the number now, so I know where to come get you. So raise your hand if you need to speak. Okay. So Thank you. Board member comment. Thank you. Hey. So uh, any other public comment on this item? No, we have no more public comment. Okay. Um. So about a board member comment. I. You know, I'm kind of excited here. Can I share a photo from my screen? Uh, you should have, I think you're, you should be able to share. Oh, shoot. Well, how do I do it so it doesn't show all my documents on my screen? Oh, here we go. Okay, okay. Oh my God. Well, anyway, let's take another commenter. I want to kind of figure this out. Okay, Richard Larson. Richard? Yeah, thanks. So um, I, I, I would have uh, a question unless uh, it's not it's not the correct question, but I believe at one point that was all one site operated by Welch's. And I, yeah. uh, at, at any rate, let me let me ask the question here. So uh, for uh, Jessica and or Michael, um, based on what you've reported and what we see in these test reports, and because the level of development continued well into the planning phase of this project. Has the project development team opinion indicated that the VCA or the RAW will result in some on-site activity? Jessica or Michael, if you'd like to answer. Can you clarify that a little bit? What do you mean by on-site activity? Well, we're just, we're just local, you know, like lay people. None of us are, I don't believe, uh, well, except for Tom here is an engineer, but. Most of us don't have backgrounds in uh, looking at things going on on site and trying to figure out who are these people and what are they doing and that sort of thing. And some of the people here live right across the street or have kids that go back back and forth every day. Um, my question is because the level of development continued well into the planning phase, has the project development team at Pinion indicated that this uh, VCA or the RAW will result in some on-site activity. Okay, so I'm not sure what uh, what is meant by like the 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 development continued into the the cleanup process. Um, so I don't believe that there's been any development on the site. But if the raw is approved. Uh, what will happen is the implementation of the cleanup. So that at this time includes excavation of six different excavation areas. And again, we're gonna go through this in our presentation on December 1st, but I'm just gonna give a brief little overview um, of it right now. 
Uh, so six excavation areas, and there's going to be installation of four soil vapor extraction wells, um, and I believe that is for a pilot test, and then um, there is also groundwater monitoring testing. I don't think that there's any uh, wells that will be added. So at the time of implementation, uh, so before they start working on the site, I will be sending you guys work notices. Um, so you will have that information. You will be able to know uh, basically what, what you're gonna be seeing on site, what you're gonna be hearing, um, what numbers to call if you see anything out of the ordinary, um, what measures they're supposed to be taking for safety, and so that um, you know how they're supposed to be protecting you. And if those measures aren't being uh, taken, obviously that is when uh, you know we need you guys to call us as well if we're not actually physically on site that day. Um, so. I hope that maybe answers your question. Is that and, what you're talking about, about site activity? Uh, could I, could I, respond to that? Yeah, I'd like to respond too, if that's okay. Um, uh, yes, from, from what I understand, from what I've read in the raw, um, they are proposing the uh, only committing to one uh, soil vapor extraction point as their pilot test to run for one month. And then um, the an additional three vapor extraction points, which aren't committed yet, but if they go, if they install them, they would be on the borders of the property, as I mentioned earlier, um, not in the center of the property. And then also they say uh, that it is likely to run prior to soil excavation, which of course is vague language, which opens up the possibility that it could happen simultaneous or even after soil excavation. And then um, as for the groundwater monitoring wells, there are three groundwater monitoring wells, I believe, and they're also on the borders of the property. And, and none of these are in the areas that have been identified as having the most uh, high impacts of toxic contamination. Okay. All right. Our next board member is gonna be Melanie. Melanie Belomo. Hey guys. Hey. Jessica, thanks for being here and putting all that together. And also thanks to local hero, Michael, as always. Um, you know, I grew up in Simi Valley under the shadow of Rocketdyne, AKA Santa Susana Field Lab. So, um, you know, as good as it feels like you hear about a government agency stepping in right to manage something like this. DTSC, it sounds like, okay, this is official, we're gonna get taken care of. But communities such as the one I grew up in have been so let down and continue to be let down by these government agencies. And I just wonder what assurances are there for the community that DTSC will act in the best interest of the community because that's who they serve. I, I, I don't know how all this works. I just have a couple quick questions. Does DTSC and opinion group, do they meet, like how do they discuss this? Are you guys meeting? Are there lobbyists present? That kind of thing. Um, I also, who is, I know they're the proponent here and this is a, I think you said a voluntary cleanup agreement. I'm sorry if I got that wording wrong, but if um, this is approved, is opinion, are they the ones who are going to execute the cleanup? Because that concerns me because they've shown from the beginning a complete disregard for the um, health and well being of the community. So um, I, that, that would be a huge concern, also, regardless, if, even if this raw becomes totally like awesome and legit and this is going to be great, if they have any part of the cleanup, um, that's that's scary. That's a scary prospect because um, they were fine with you know the destruction of an entire community um, with the things that they stated. That uh, love that Michael brought all that up and showed those screenshots of like the site is not contaminated. I mean they really just do not care about us. So um, I I do want to know are they going to be the ones doing the cleanup? I hope not. If this ever takes place, that's it. Thanks. 
Thank you, Melanie. I want to clarify. Sorry, can I answer that or do you have time? Oh, sure. Sorry. I okay. <laughs> um, I need clarification on the first question. You were talking about meetings. I'm, I was confused on that. No? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I was just waiting for the unmute to pop up. Um, yeah. Like when you guys discuss this, like, and figure out like what the plan is, is that just like closed meetings between you guys and Pinion? And are there lobbyists present, like putting pressure on DTSC for how this cleanup is going to go? I just like, there's, are those public meetings, how those occur? Because I'm assuming you guys have to meet to come up with a plan, or do you guys not meet with Pinion at all? So there are meetings um, to discuss the investigation documents, to mm -hmm. discuss the the documents, all the documents that are on public on the EnviroStore right now. Um, so all of those are publicly available. So, so the meetings that we have with them are to discuss whether or not the work that the environmental consultant for the proponent did was sufficient in order to, you know, meet this criteria or meet this study or or what have you so um was was the is the supplemental site investigation enough to characterize the site or is the the do you need to go out for more sampling so we will talk to like they'll send us the report we go in and review it and then we send them back comments to say hey that you know we need this and this and this um, it goes through our geological services unit. It goes through our toxicologists, things like that. Um, all of these folks at DTSC review the, uh, review the investigation reports that they send us. Um, so there are meetings to discuss like, hey, you know, here are our comments. This is what we need from you, what have you. Um, but again, all of those documents are posted on the website for public review. Um, and then as far as executing the cleanup, the cleanup is executed by an environmental consultant uh, under, this, under the oversight of DTSC. Uh, it is paid for by the proponent. Thank you, Jessica. Um, our next- uh... Vince, can I show something real quick? I'm super excited. Yeah? Vince? I know you have it. You do you have, you have co-host, don't you? Sam, I don't even know how to do this. Is it at the bottom? Okay, here we go. Share screen. Yeah. Hmm. What is this? Desktop one. Oh God, I don't even know how to do it. Okay, so here. Can you see that? Yeah. So this is from. So it's like, I don't know if I should show any of my research, but you know, whatever. I have I had never seen this photo before, and it was taken by uh, in 1940 by the um, Automobile Club of Southern California when they were con um, digging out the freeway and then uh, paving. Yeah. Anyway, so this is uh, a view from. Okay, so straight ahead at 12 o'clock, that's the Welch's dry cleaning facility. This little house right here, that's that uh, King Auto, that auto sales place, right? And this is the old Pasadena Avenue bridge. And as I zoom in, there's a little child running in the dirt towards the toxic dry cleaners. Now, during this time, or you know, at the beginning of the century, there were all these rock crushers there at the confluence because they were trying to deepen, the city was letting them profit off of the, whatever, they were digging it deeper so that it wouldn't flood so much. And then they were sell selling the sand for, you know, for cement for downtown for the buildings and stuff like that there was a shortage and so these rock crushers really kind of blighted the area and there was a lot of complaining about it uh charles lummis spearheaded that uh so the thing is when they were doing this they were uh taking the sand and stuff and then they were pumping it back up on the embankments because uh you know they didn't want it to flood or whatever and so at the welch's avenue 34 site in 1940 they uh, cut off like a big edge where the toxic tanks were and they 
removed that earth and then they moved it all around. And uh, so I did a, uh, I researched every uh, permit record on file for every parcel on the whole, both properties from 1910 to 1930. And I found out that they moved thousands and thousands of cubic yards of earth. And um, anyway, uh, where they moved them, we don't know, but I'm pretty sure they relocated uh, based on the grading reports of the quality of the sand and stuff. I'm pretty sure they were pumping, they were moving stuff around back onto those two sites. And uh, in 1966, they did a high de highway dedication on the Northern part of the Welch's property when they were doing the freeway and it caught into a big chunk of the toxic area. Uh, and uh, what am I saying? That's, I could pull up the, the report right here. Let's see. There, I don't know if you could see that. Mm, I'll go to the top. So this is like every, every permit ever pulled on every property, right? And the red is uh, either, either something super toxic like clarification room or it's about dirt being moved. So they moved down to some more red areas. In 1966, they moved a ton of earth and then they demoed a bunch of buildings on that property. That is the time when a bunch of kids got sick at Hillside. Um, we don't know, see how it says 3505 to 3509 Pasadena, 1966, uh, 1800 cubic yards, 1000 yards, 2000 cubic yards. Uh, anyway, so, uh, Let's see what this one is. Oh, damn. Can I move that? I've got too many things open. But I want to know. Okay, so here's like a little comp of all this earth that was moved. So 1966. Sarah, we, we can't see what you're seeing. We're still seeing the first picture. Oh, damn. Sorry. Yeah. Well, anyway, I don't know how to do it. You have to but... unshare and then you have to. You have to stop it. There should be a little. Can you see comp. the chart of like all the numbers and stuff? No. Oh, damn. Sorry, I'm stupid. Here. I don't know how to do it. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah, so there you go. Boom, 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 boom. All the uh, permits from history, from the beginning of time, all the dirt that they moved. And then, can you see the top one that's like, that I'm moving right here? Ah, whatever. But, uh, if we can get like an investigator on the site, I don't know. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that because uh, I want to say that like, you know, when you look, I, I was reading a Caltrans uh, environmental report from 2010 when they're investigating all, there, there are a lot of sites that aren't, that I'd never heard of before. And they're on the other side of the freeway there. And originally that was all one chunk of, you know, I guess that was level. And so uh, a lot of that stuff might've been flowing from the North too. That's what I have to say. So uh, that's it. Okay. So just click on the top to unshare and then I'll okay. go to the next board member, which it will be William Morris. Do I go to new share or oh, stop share? I got it. Yeah, stop. It'll give us back the screen. Okay. So William Morris, you can unmute yourself. There we go. Sorry for making the meeting late, but I am actually at my fundraiser right now. That that property has been contaminated from as far as I know, and I'm fourth generation there in Lincoln Heights. They used to have parked the trains there as well before too. That was after Walshers was gone. So the thing is, there is no guarantee that they're gonna clean it up. They've neglected my community of being there in Lincoln Heights for four generations. So what guarantee are they gonna guarantee that they're gonna fix it and compensate our neighbors and our loved ones that live in that community now. Mm -hmm. Can you, somebody answer that question? Jessica. Thank you, William. Very welcome. So um, the removal action work plan is the document that proposes the cleanup options. I again, encourage you all to make comments on all of the research that you have done on this site. It is very important that we have all of that information 
if in case we don't have it already, in case it hasn't been looked at already. So we encourage your comment. The, and the reason for the voluntary cleanup agreement is to ensure that the site is cleaned up and ensure that there are financial assurances on the property to maintain the cleanup for at least 30 years. So that is, so, so those structures can, so those, so like an operation and maintenance plan can stay in place for that long and, and possibly longer, depending on the needs of the site. So that is, that is why those mechanisms are put into place. That is why we have those agreements. And that is why, um, you know, getting a, getting a cleanup done at the site is important so that it can be, so it can be cleaned up for your community. I under, I hear what you're saying when, when you're saying that this, you know, I don't like this part of it. I don't like that part of it. I want this to be done differently. Those are all important things for us to know and important comments to be made so that we can potentially make adjustments to the raw and how we, and how we proceed. Um, isn't there a 50 year old, 50 year covenant on the um, affordable housing on that site, 50 years? Like uh, it goes back to market rate after 50 or, uh, it, it, it's not rent control after 50 years. I think that's what Avenue 30, 34 is. So by the time they clean it up, then it goes to market rate. I don't have any information on like city planning and how they do their laws. Okay. Okay, our next speaker is Diego Zapata. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jessica, for your informative presentation. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I'll try to keep my questions short. I think I have two uh, that are in my mind. Uh, one uh, is essentially, I'm assuming the Department of Toxic Substances Control knows uh, exactly uh, how to minimize the environmental danger that is posed by this project, given you know up-to-date epidemiological research. Uh, and I'm assuming, <laughs> and it's a safe, safe assumption to make that the majority of our community does ex want exactly that to minimize the danger that is posed by this development project. So I guess my question ultimately is, does the Department of Toxic Substance Control have the authority to mandate a given uh, remediation plan? And the other question I have is how, how helpful is all of the our um, comments that we're submitting. What is the, how is that gonna be reviewed? Does that have any sort of leverage at the ultimately in regards to decision-making process for the remediation of the site? And then my last question is, should they choose to just remove the contaminated soil within the site? Where does that soil go? Is there any accountability um, of the pollutants that are present in that soil to the uh, applicant, the developer? Because the last thing I want to do is for Lincoln Heights to essentially send an environmental burden to another community that might, you know, have just because it has less social capital and or or any type of capital for it to bear the burden that we've bared for generations. So uh, I welcome any uh, answers to those three questions. So as far as uh, minimizing the environmental dangers um, during the cleanup, the site will have a site-specific health and safety plan. Um, and those measures uh, will be taken. They will be all of the construction workers and site workers will be trained on the health and safety plan. And again, that is for their safety as well as for the safety of the community members. Um, th Things in the health and safety plan include um, spraying down the trucks um, before they exit the, the property so that the contaminations don't travel off site, um, cap it, um, capping the trucks so that the, the uh, contamination doesn't fly out, um, having air monitors, things like that, and, and 
again, we can, we'll go over some of these things in the presentation on December 1st. So I don't want to dive too deeply into it here right now. And, and again, you can contact me as well and we can, we can discuss those things in depth as well. But yes, a health, um, a site health and safety plan, site specific health and safety plan is required for every single one of our cleanups. Um, so how important are your comments is another question that I heard from you. I think, and I, and I was talking to Sarah about this and all of the research, and she's telling me about all of this research that she did. And um, it, you know, so the preliminary, um, the phase one site assessment is a research of the available historic documentation about where potential contam contamination is found. If we can find other documentation that shows us that there's other contamination on site on areas of the site that need to be tested, that's that's somewhere that we that we may implement testing for. Um, so that's a, that's you know a potential area where we may like require additional testing. Um, that that comment might go that way. So so once we have all of the comments, we will do a response to comments document. Whoever provides their um, their contact information will be able to access, will be able to um, receive a copy of that. Um, so, and I, and Marcia, my boss, who's, who's on here, and you all can see her, but not everybody can. Um, she had a site where a community member had told them about different, um, it was a school site, had told them about historical information um, and based on that historical information, um, additional testing was done. And if you guys want to see specific health and safety aspects done for your neighborhood, tell us about it. If you it, like, if those things are important to you, tell us about it. Review the the way that the trucks are going to transport the the dirt offsite. If that's important to you, tell us about it because we need to know what's going to be right for your community. Um, where does the soil go? There are two places where soil can go, um, and that and those are um, licensed facilities within the state of California and facilities outside of the state of California that do not have the same uh, environmental regulations that we have. So the two sites that generally accept the hazardous waste contaminated soil are Button Willow and if I get this wrong, Marcia, let me know. Um, it's Button, Button Willow and Kettleman. And so I totally hear you when you're saying I don't want to throw my dirty laundry into somebody else's laundry basket. Um, but that's where it would go at this point. Thank you, Jessica. <clears throat> Thank you, Jessica. I can't raise my hand, but I do have a, a comment for Jessica. And it's usually a procedural problem, what we see with DTS and how the city allows the developer to pay for its own environmental impact instead of the state agency carrying it out. The, what we found with their environmental impact is that they're always favorable for the development. And I often ask myself, what, then what do we need DTSC for? Um, you're basically reading a report from a third party you're not taking, I know you guys do some of the sampling out there, but it's like you stated, it's not all. You don't do all the testing that, that's required. Um, you often soften up the system by using, um, you know, commercial standard and, um, you know, residential standard, but not recreational standards, which is totally different. And so DTS has been proven to be outdated, even in the case in the X site uh, south of us, and where they were sued and, and, and proven that, you know, it was it was gross negligence, you know, on, on DTSC's, uh, and, and they're not the only ones, Huntington Beach has filed, and there's plenty of cases on file right now of what, you know, we often ask ourselves in, in, in the groups, what is DTS put there for? If they're not going to be the ones implementing the testing and then total control of it, and you're gonna let the, the wolf in the hen house, of course, he's going to take advantage of all the situations and why even with uh, Michael Hayden and some of the stories that are coming up, these sites are historically documented as not being able to be developed on. I don't know what the, the only reason why that they're, they're being even considered development 
because the political system has lifted the standard or lowered the standard of acceptable contamination. That doesn't make these projects safe. And I know that DTS, you know, sometimes sits back and says, hey, the states are moving these, these uh, levels up and down. But let's face it, we, we as people have ruined those lands. Even the word to mitigate is not to cure. And I think that's disingenuous of a state agency that we pay with our tax dollars to come down and say, hey, we're going to mitigate it. So we're not going to clean the 100%. And we also don't have a study 100% if we mitigate it to 30% that the exposure time, the, the respiratory time that's there that you're exposed to, that maybe the kids won't have reproductive harms or maybe adults won't have cancer. But we'll wait to the future and see the results as those things pop up. That was even shown even in the case of chromium with, uh, um, I forgot, Erin Brockovich, right? Where we're looking at the studies there and all of a sudden, 20 years later, we're seeing all these effects of the, the chromium in people and the cross-contamination. I mean, this is not something that is new, it's old. And we just hope that the state would look and take responsibility to say if these sites were contaminated and all of a sudden because a city ordinance or a state ordinance pushes the level down to be acceptable, we expect the state to stand up and say it's unacceptable. Lowering the bar does not mean that the people are going to be more healthy just to have a progressive platform. But I don't need an answer. I just wanted it out there because I've seen this. I, I've seen you, Jessica, even on the Pasel del Rio. We're seeing the same thing happen in our community over and over again. And I think even in Lincoln Heights, we're, we're feeling it now. So I think that's something to take to the state that our people aren't dumb to the situation. We've got a lot of good people that are working on this. And I don't think that the city or the state can blind us anymore. And it's not just about blinding, but it's about the health, safety, and welfare of our kids that will be our future here, that I think we should be protecting and that the state should have in mind when approving these projects or any type of cleanup for the future. But thank you. I don't want to make it too much. I know we have our next one would be Michael Hayden. Let me unmute him. Perfectly said. Thank you, Vincent. Um, thank you, Vincent. Um, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Um, so I, I've, I've been muted, but I've, I've wanted to answer a few of the questions that some of the panelists um, uh, asked. Um, Melanie's question was about how are they communicating with the developer? And we know from a Public Records Act request that the developer originally tried to evade the entire voluntary agreement process through a simple request for a letter to, um, in their words, satisfy the city's requirements. So the city only has one requirement and that is for DTSC to sign off on this. And they tried to do that with a simple letter where um, DTSC said that Welch's contamination was unlikely to affect the future residents of the Avenue 34 property. Um, you know, we caught that, thankfully, and were able to raise the concern that that didn't um, prove that the site was actually safe. And it was that process that kickstarted the whole voluntary agreement with DTSC. DTSC might have a different version of that story, and that's understandable. My main complaint with that whole exchange is with the developers. Um, DT and then to uh, William Morrison's point um, about how do we make sure that the neighborhoods are protected and, and the decades of neglect? I, I want to say that DTSC's geologists um, said years and years ago in their reports for Welch's that the Welch's contamination needed to be uh, investigated in the surrounding neighborhood to see how far it had spread and how it was affecting the community. And that investigation has never happened. And now we're calling for the same thing at Avenue 34. And DTSC has already said, we, will, we are not planning to do any offsite investigation. So um, your point is very well taken, William. Um, and then as far as uh, Diego um, brought up the point of soil removal, um, it is important that uh, contaminated soil be removed to the appropriate um, you know, appropriate facilities that handle that kind of the issue of like, who gets that is, you know, disturbing, but it's much um, more disturbing to think of contaminated soil going to unregulated landfills that, um, that aren't 
set up to, to handle toxic waste. And one of the issues I have with the cleanup proposal that um, I would like answered is that on the maps, they show the footprint for the planned parking garage, which is 20 feet deep. And then they show a footprint for the planned uh, soil remediation, which is kind of like more or less fits with half of that. And my question with that for DTSC is, are you only treating half of that soil excavation as a toxic excavation that needs to go to one of those specialty landfills? And does the rest of the parking lot go to any old regular landfill with perhaps the landfill not knowing that they're receiving contaminated soil. Um, uh, and then I do have one personal question for uh, Jessica Swan regarding the December 1st meeting. Um, and that is that, you know, we've submitted, I submitted an 18 page document full of questions and pointing out inconsistencies with the testing and uh, raw, that inconsistencies with DTSC's own guidelines. And we got answers that deflected any response. Um, so I'm not sure, I, I remain skeptical about what the purpose of this community meeting on the first is. Um, the community definitely should raise their voices. Um, I don't know what DTSC's uh, response will be in the way of changing any of their plans because they haven't changed their plans so far. And furthermore, will the community have an opportunity to present um, or will it just be one minute of public comment for everybody? Or will the community be allowed to make a presentation the same as DTSC will make a presentation? Thank you, Michael. Okay. Um, so the development wouldn't start before the cleanup. So as far as whether or not the soil from the remainder of the garage would be tested. The cleanup goals for the site would need to be met before the development could begin. So that is first and foremost, number one. Um, so what, what those cleanup goals are, that again remains to be seen. We're still in the comment period, right? Um, so for the December 1st meeting, the format for that meeting will be a DTSC pre presentation, a question and answer section, and then uh, a time to accept public comment. So there would not be um, a, for a format for which to allow for a presentation from the public. That's not generally. Thank you, Jessica. So attendees. So that's the end of our, our board member comments. Um, Sarah? Okay, so we have two attendees. We have a, a, a phone number here with three more attendees. We might have to, it's already 8.30. We have a couple more items on here. We'll take these three uh, public questions, right, Vince? Yeah, if they can just make them into comments better so that we can move on. Okay. Because so, we, do uh, have, we do have other items and it, like you said, it's 8.30. Yeah. Um, um, let, me, let me start off with Adam, uh, Mr. Adam, if you can please state your name. Yeah, this is Christian Adams. Um, I wanted to say I agree with you majority on what you said, um, except the part where you said we the people were the ones responsible. It's, we, we need to realize that the people in the community, um, you're, you're, you're um, a product of the environment. So when you allow corporations in your, in your community that are known to pollute, to you piggyback, they'll probably be piggybacked off of um, the, the next item in the agenda would be um, the, the Chick-fil-A. Chick you know, you're, you're still allowing these corporations that, exactly like you had mentioned with exceed you know um they 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 filed for bankruptcy and the taxpayers were held with the bill were, were held accountable you know for the cleanup so my my comment would be for dtsc where would be the accountability if say this no longer becomes a um a source of investment that avenue 34 project would want to do if it if it entails community 
uh, surveying and actually getting to the bottom of this actual pollution, who knows how far into the community it's gone. Um, but say they do decide to drop out, the information cannot be swept under the rug. The, the land would still be polluted. Where is DT, DTSC's responsibility to the community at that point for making sure that there is a cleanup, even if say they decide to back out of funding for this or they don't have the funding to do an entire community cleanup because that's what it's sounding like it's going to be it's, it's they're going to need to to far more capital than what they may be anticipated to actually resolve the issue that's the issue with the community's problem with this not obviously corporations see no problem with polluting and and having um, any adverse um, effects for the community because they they simply receive the the profits from our suffering. They don't they don't share in our suffering. No, they just reap the reward of the capitalist society. So that's my main comment is just making sure that unless obviously here nobody here is a corporation. You know, um, if you do, if you have ties to a corporation, then there may be a conflict of interest as there had been previously with previous board members of. Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council. So that is getting to the very bottom, which is the, the scum on everybody's shoes. We need to clean up the community at whatever the cost may be. And hopefully the right person is gonna be fitting the bill for it. If you want to invest in our community, you say you wanna invest in our community and housing, you need to completely resolve the issue that the community has found the problem with. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And then we have a um, number ending in 046. Hello? Hello? I don't know if this is Anna Lee. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to, um, you know, when I first found out about this project, I had um, emailed uh, the developers, uh, Robert and DeForest, and, you know, it was um, a really big beat around the bush to get any information about the site and it being toxic. Uh, you know, I had found out first from Michael Hayden bringing uh, around flyers and it was uh, pretty unnerving and they did not give any straight answers and just said, you know, Hey, you know, there is uh, you know, we've done, we've done tests and no big deal, blah, blah, blah. And everything's really kind of been uh, just, you know, n no um, uh, responsibility taken, like check here. And then you go to check here and then it's like a run around. And I'm just wondering, you know, with uh, these different lawsuits that pop up and that's been brought up um, about, you know, like however many years down the road when things like do go haywire, who will be held responsible? You know, everything so far leading up to this is so fishy. And it's like in the end, when when, you know, hey, there's nothing wrong, like who who's going to be liable for the damage that it does cause? I know we're not supposed to ask questions, but I had like my hand raised before. Me, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Anneli. Wow. All right. <clears throat> so uh, no hands up anymore. Uh, thank you. So there's no action on this item. Um, no, but I, I do think that we should keep it on our radar on planning and land use because there was so much interest within the community. So oh, I, we should have an item on there at least, you know, in the next, you know, maybe two meetings to yeah. bring them an update. And if Jessica can help us with that. Yeah. And yeah, the meeting, the hearing is on, or the, the DTSC meeting is on um, the first, right? And then I think that's when our meeting is actually. Um, no, it's not. I made sure. <laughs> so December 1st, December 1st is Wednesday. You guys meet on Thursdays. I was like, the planning and planning sure. meeting is on, is on, well, we're trying to keep it on the Wednesdays. Oh. Anyway, don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. Um, the times would be different. Um, cool. Well, thank you, Jessica. And uh, yeah, if anybody, uh, you know, you can 
anybody from the public who wants, if you want to learn more, we have the uh, accompanying document that Jessica made. It's in our supplementary documents on our website at lincolnheightsnc.org slash agendas. Um, thank you, Michael. Oh, I see Lucy's hands up. We have a Lucy hand. Can we get the one, because Lucy's hand was up before. Should, can we get Lucy real quick? Okay, Lucy, you can unmute yourself. Lucy? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes, we can. Okay, hi. Hi, good evening. My name is Lucy. Um, I live, uh, hold on a second. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. My name is Lucy and I live in Avenue 38, which is about two minutes away, away from this Avenue 34 side. Uh, English is, not my sec is my second language, so please bear with me. Um, I wanted to make comment that, uh, but because somebody brought up Excite Technologies in Vernon. In 2015, the Excite Technologies plant in the city of Vernon closed its plan, leaving the city of Vernon, Maywood, and Boyle Heights contaminated and the residents sick. I find it hard to believe that a few years later in a country as advanced as ours, in an important state like California, one more case of contaminated site is being discussed. Is my understanding, Jessica, from the DTS, that you are refusing to investigate, your department is refusing to investigate the sewers and any upsides testing? Is that right? I don't understand why do you guys, do your department refuse to investigate and do testing when an elementary school is across the street from this site? Is this development more valuable than the lives of our children? More valuable than the life of an entire community? Or do you say that we are not that important because the majority in this community are people of color? Are these, is, uh, if these two sides were in wealthy communities, we wouldn't have this conversation. I please, please respectfully ask you, Jessica, to please investigate the sewers and do more of the outside testing, please. Your department, it's well known, has a history of slow response to health threats and poor oversight of hazardous waste facilities. So, but please this time do something. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Lucy. I could just take a two seconds to respond to that comment with no objection i'm going to go for it um so in the response to comments i'm not sure where uh mr hayden is getting the information uh that we said that we would not test uh off-site um so the response that i have uh, reads, DTSC acknowledges the concern for potential exposure to nearby residents and workers, and we will require post-raw confirmation sampling and post-remediation risk assessment to verify health protection of on-site and off-site receptors or additional investigations and or remediation may be warranted. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, we will so we'll, ha we'll, we'll have more of this on our planning and land use. So we ask the public to look at our website and look for the agenda for planning and land use, and we'll continue to bring updates. Yeah, you could, uh, our meeting will be on the 1st of December, the next meeting, planning and land use committee. Um, and uh, you could email me, Sarah, S-A-R-A dot L-H-N-C at protonmail.com. Uh, do you want to be in the loop? Uh, Vince, should we move on to the next item? Yes. Okay, here we go. Next item. Item 7C. Subject, Chick-fil-A, a former buy rate property. Time sensitive. Okay, so we got... Presenters. <laughs> We're jumping around here. Toxic soil to fried chicken. Let's see. So we do have presenters, right? Yes, we do. Father, Father Tom and Richard Zaldivar. 
And uh, yeah, Father Tom Carey of Church of the Epiphany and Richard Zaldivar of Wallace Memorias. And uh, the description, uh, <clears throat> Chick-fil-A is, uh, well, I don't know, yes, seeks to open a restaurant at the former Byright property on Griffin and Broadway. Community discussion. Will it, uh, if Richard Saldivar is in the attendee section, can you raise your hand? I don't He's not you. here. Um, he had to, he was at another event. So uh, okay. you just get me right now. Sorry, sorry, to, we, we took a long time, but. That's okay. I'm I'm going to be fairly brief and I'm, I apologize. I also, my dog has a full bladder. So when I'm done, <laughs> I have to take him downstairs. So I'm afraid I'm, I'm going to uh, drop off pretty quickly. But um, let me speak to this just a bit where uh, about uh, three weeks ago, I was approached by a, um, a lovely woman named Tina Choi. And I'm afraid I don't have to hand the organization she works with, but she was a uh, liaison with Councilman Cedillo's office, and they were doing what's called diligence on exploring the possibilities of a, a Chick-fil-A opening on that property that you just mentioned on the corner of Griffin and uh, North Broadway at the old Byright. And so she asked if uh, she could come and why, uh, if she could come and see me and I invited Nancy Soto and Richard Zaldivar, Nancy being a member of the Neighborhood Council, who I had uh, just come to know, and also Richard, uh, who I've known for many years, is the uh, Executive Director of the Wallace and Memorias Project, and, um, and, and the really the East Side LGBTQ organization here. And so um, we met with her. They are at the very, they haven't committed uh, yet to opening this property. They are exploring, but they made a presentation to us about how wonderful this would be, and um, and that their their um, the architecture would be uh, consistent with the style of Lincoln Heights, and all of that. Um, we were, and she also brought a um, a a. a a man, a gentleman who owns three Chick Fil A's over in West Hollywood, and they were um, at great pains to tell us how those Chick Fil A's had uh, contributed to the to the gay parade and stuff like that. So um, here's the thing: uh, many eloquent comments were made before about why this is such a terrible idea, and so I I won't rehash them. Um, the main thing I want to say is that so this, this is still in the very beginning stages. And um, up until a couple of years ago, maybe 20 years ago, 10 years ago, the political stance of a corporation didn't really matter very much because really their, their uh, ability to affect things like elections and the political process was limited. But with the, the Supreme Court took care of that. And so that now the politics of a corporation are very important. 15% of the revenue that would come to this Chick-fil-A uh, would end up in corporate Chick-fil-A's coffers. So that they, Chick-fil-A has a terrible record, horrible record on LGBTQ issues, on immigration. They are major funders of, of uh, far right uh, of the far right agenda. This is a, a matter of, of great concern in, in, in a neighborhood like ours. Uh, the other thing is, is that um, it's not only the terrible food value of, of this kind of fast food and the danger it poses to our community because of the, of the high cholesterol content, all of the, the high fat content, high sugar content of all of that food, but also um, the farming methods and the way that food is processed down the supply chain are also exploitative and it's a factory farming and it's a terrible way. It's, it's, a, it's a whole chain of kind of extractive capitalism that I don't believe we want to allow into our community. So um, the way the, 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 the weapon we have to fight against this is to nip this thing in the bud, which is why we're here, uh, why we, we wanted to ask you, and what we wanted to do is come in January, we can bring uh, with us uh, 
you know, all of the evidence around uh, Chick-fil-A's anti-LGBTQ activities, uh, all of the evidence around uh, what uh, fast food does to uh, the human body and, uh, and the economic, uh, uh, you know, there's a, there's a cost to that food down the line in terms of healthcare costs and all of that, that far outweighs any savings that you get by buying cheap food. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention, I'm a little scattered because I'm a little punchy, uh, um, is um, that they also mentioned that actually they would not be hiring uh, high school kids uh, because actually the shifts that they want at that at Chick-fil-A's are longer shifts th than high school uh, kids can, can work. So that's actually not really a consideration in this, uh, in this regard. That's a prime piece of, of real estate right there. And I can't believe that uh, the owners of that property uh, can't find a better and just as profitable tenant you know, or buyer for that property than Chick-fil-A. So our request to you tonight is that we be allowed to come and see you that we're at the very beginning of this of this of this process. So we're, it's not a uh, something that is going to happen tomorrow. And so we'll have more information about what uh, what what their conclusions were in their uh, in their diligence. You know about the uh, the receptive the re receptivity of the uh, of the community to having a Chick Fil A, and we can also get our ducks in a row in presenting to you. Uh, more formal uh, presentations on on what Chick Fil A has been about in terms of LGBTQ rights. So that's my presentation. Thank you. Sarah, I'm gonna, I want to make a recommendation that we send because it's still like um, like Father Tom Carey said that it's still in its infancy, right? Yeah. And I think that we should definitely send it over to our land use and make it an issue in the event that it becomes. You know, it forms into now an official request for the Chick Fil A to be there, but at least yeah. we can have those conversations about it. That's what yeah, we and I think we want to hop on it and let them know that there would be significant resistance well, to having that that kind of uh, business. The thing, so if we, for instance, the project's not, you know, they haven't filed anything with city planning or anything. No, um, I don't know how much I can talk about this, but. Uh, Basically, we'll bounce, we'll bounce it because basically you're seeking a letter, correct, of opposition? Yeah, or, or a resolution, whichever whichever seems best to the council. So it would go to uh, planning and land use in which we would actually, because we have to have an unbiased dialogue. Uh, Sarah, that's why, that's why I think we can't go any further in discussion with it because it, it really has to go to the, the committee. Yeah. And in the committee, we can figure out whether it would be a resolution and do or right. do I don't know. Would, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just, yeah, right. It bounce, so just technically, yeah, it has to bounce to the planning and land use committee and then okay, where it gets uh, more presentations happen, public dialogue. Would, the, would you guys have been able be able to do that by, by your January meeting or? I mean, well, the planning and land use meetings on um, December 1st. Okay. So uh, I'm trying to do it on the first Wednesday of every month or something. Yeah, first Wednesday. Uh, Vince, what, yeah, okay. No, 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 it can be, it can be put onto the agenda. If, if the land use is gonna meet December 1st then definitely carries request to have it put onto the agenda can be put on for discussion at that time where we can talk more about what the, the letter would entail and then Father Carey and other people can chime in on it and we can hear the public too before we, we approve or disapprove the letter. Yeah, and then the general board will be on the second, the day after. No, I'm talking January would be coming. Oh, so you want it, you want it in January. I mean, yeah, yeah, you guys, I, you can take as much time as you want. We're, we, we'd be ready in January. Okay, so then it will be, I don't wanna say January 1st, but yeah, the Wednesday would be January 5th. Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just looking at my no. time's flying. No, no. Okay, so I'll just write this on my thing. Okay, uh, and I guess with that, we would go to public comments. Or I'm going to log off. Uh, thanks a lot. Well, Thank I you. think I think we we are not taking no action, so it's not required for us to go to comment right now because it's going to. Oh, okay, there's no action. Okay, so yeah. 
So we're not taking a vote for the board members that want to speak. Mm -hmm. This is not an action item. We're not taking any action. It was yes. just pushed off to committee. Okay. But everybody in the public and board members will have time to discuss it. So I recommend that you look for our agenda on our land use and start to follow us then. Cool. So then we move on to the next item, correct? Correct. So we're, miss we're skipping number eight. We're going to, oh, okay, planning and land use committee. That's me. Uh, now I have a supplementary document. I don't know if you want to pull it up, but it's a, uh, it's a uh, discussion of possible action on letter to Bureau of Street Services and Bureau of Engineers regarding the Lincoln Heights bid street planners. Uh, description, discussion and possible action on letter to Bureau of Street Services and BOE regarding uh, Lincoln Heights bid planters within the Lincoln Heights bid zone that are unpermitted and obstructing the public right of way including handicap parking, pluck position approved November 3rd, 21. So, <clears throat> you know, this is a, this was on a previous agenda. It was on a planning and land use agenda. <clears throat> and we approved a letter to send to the city. <clears throat> so basically, Vince, should I tell, tell just a little summary here? No, I, th I mean, I think if you do a small summary, if we can put the letter up, is it on here? Yeah, it's right. on the, it's under item. Uh, right here, right? I got B this. Eight, let me see. There's like a, I, I, I kind of compiled the PDFs. Uh, yeah, and then is there, there's an image of the things, but basically like one night in J June, all of these uh, metal plant, like trash can planter things just appeared all over Broadway and Daly and up Pasadena Avenue too, um, bolted all in the sidewalk willy nilly, like no logic, right? And uh, I thought like, this is pretty strange. Anyway, um, you know, there's the thing going on with the anti-homeless planters all over the city. But in any case, I received a couple, um, I was contacted by a couple residents. Uh, one of the residents was dropping his mom off at the, uh, well, she was going to El, El Pavo, El Pavo Bakery. And I think the medical doctor's right there next to uh, King Taco. And she's handicapped and she was trying to get out of the van and the thing was just bolted in the handicap spot on the sidewalk like right next to the handicap sign, right? So I contacted the city, I contacted CD1 and uh, people wouldn't get back to me and it took a month for them. Like I contacted the ADA people and uh, I contact, you know, CD1 told me to contact the bid, Miss Iwatu, so I did. And then I got no reply. I just got a reply from a lawyer who uh, basically I did a PRA request. I said, do you have the permits for these or, you know, What's going on? And uh, the reply had, you know, there were no, was no evidence of permits. So I just want to check with the city because these things are all over the place and uh, they don't, it doesn't make much sense to me, uh, obstructing the public right away. But the public, the community has been very vocal about these things. So, so that's the what letter, the letter is requesting that. We want to know if they're approved if they're um, legitimate because uh, they're placed, the way that they're placed, it's very suspicious. And the fact that that one was in that handicap spot for so long, uh, it was just mind boggling. Uh, so so what is, uh, I wanna make a motion to approve the letter so we can get to board discussion and then public comment. Is there a second? And hold on, I got to, I'm gonna unmute everybody. Uh, that way, if somebody wants a second, they can unmute themselves. Second. Okay, Richard. Um, uh, Richard uh, seconds. Yes, sir. Okay, Sarah. So, uh, just for, if anybody in the board has a comment or. Yeah. Um. Does anybody in the board have a comment about these things? Yeah. Okay, Gil. Yes. Uh... You know, uh, I first of all, I like I like I like that you uh, put the, the thing for Chick Fil A to go to committee. That's actually the way that this whole process is supposed to work. Okay, it's supposed to go to committee and then comes to the board. Now, uh, I see all the paperwork that went through with this, uh, Sarah. You usually are very very thorough about this and everything else like that. And I think you're going after the wrong guy. Okay, this uh, from uh, I gather that uh, these. Uh, uh, trash containers and planners and everything else like that have 
have been in existence for uh, over 20 years. And uh, uh, even before ADA and all that came about. Uh, and uh, the bid was requested by the city to, uh, because they were in disrepair, to, to uh, uh, put in new containers and everything else. And, but they were not uh, involved in the, in the permit process or, or anything else like that. Uh, and uh, I think you're just you're, you're going with the wrong guy. It's it, it's a, the city the yeah. city that uh, is is doing that did this and requested bid. And uh, uh, yes, your your point is valid as far as uh, the yeah. handicap and everything else is concerned. But the handicap uh, items of sort like that was was not even in existence when these were were Let's first started yeah, up. There are day. trash cans, and then there's 50 million of these things bolted everywhere. And actually, after I wrote, they removed some of them that I indicated were really problematic, like all along the corner of Broadway and Griffin in front of the fire mm -hmm. right. And then also, because it's basically, I went through all their minutes, and it's talking about the homeless, what are we going to do? And then it's talking about a branding campaign, and then some street furniture funds. So it's like these trash cans have their logo on it. Basically, they've been, they're planters. They're like a little higher than your knee. When you get out of your car, you smash your door on them. But also they've been there for six months now and they're full of garbage or just dirt with like nothing in them. Well, you're going after the wrong people. You had well, to go to the CD1 and everything else Sarah, like that. We, Sarah, we should let just Gil go okay. so we can move on to the sure. next. Because it's just, it's public pro property. It's public right away. So this is our property. It's the people's property. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking. Next, uh, anybody else? Uh, Richard, I saw your hand up. Did you want to make a comment? Yeah, I was going to agree with Sarah. Um, these things like pop out overnight and they're just so random sizes filled with trash, like kind of like an eyesore. That, that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Is there is there any uh, other board member comment? I don't see none, Sarah, of the public. All right, so we'll go to public comments. Okay, we got uh, two Mitzi Watsu. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, you guys are partially right. Um, we did have a plan uh, when these were rolled out. Um, however, the person that um, welded them in did not follow our plan. He welded him in wherever he thought he wanted to. And, um, and then Sarah brought to our attention as well as uh, CD1 that some of them were placed wrong. So we did inventory, we removed anything, anyone that was either obstruction or in a handicap zone. So the one that is even in this letter the 29, 26, there's not even one there anymore. Um, so those were all taken care of. Um, we do have plants in the planters. Um, if they are not in there, then that means that somebody had stolen um, the insert that the planters go in. There should not be any garbage in them. If there are, you should let me know which ones they are um, because we will take care of that. And as far as you guys not being notified, um, I was told that you guys were notified that we had fixed this situation. Thank you. Cool. Thank uh, you. Mr. Adams? Yes, hello, thank you. Uh, this is Christian again, sorry you guys, I'm sure you guys have heard enough of me. But uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more that this is, uh, besides, uh, it being an eyesore, it really does not serve a purpose if the trash is constantly overflowing. Uh, and it also creates an environment where people think that, oh, I can just toss my trash here. Uh, in other societies in Japan, there's no trash cans like that um, that are out and they have one of the cleanest cities uh, uh, that you, you can find. So I, I, I think that they should be removed. Um, they're, they're a waste of space. If you're gonna put something there, put a, a fruit tree not a plant tree you know something where if there are people that are that are hungry they just grab a guayaba a, a, an apple whatever it may be you know but uh i i don't think that uh the the community would agree with where they're positioned 
uh, and that they serve their actual community. Because if you live in this community, most of the time you throw your trash at your house. It's not like you're walking down the street and, and you have your all your garbage and you get tossed there, you know. So, uh, and I do notice that the planters, they're 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 just they're so obtuse. They 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 they're not creating a a, a, a good flow for trash. Traffic neither. So um, that's all. Thank you guys. Thank you. Our next speaker is RR. If you could please state your name. Yes, my name is Ronnie Rudolph. Um, I'm calling on the position of I manage um, a lot of property that's on Broadway. Um, I also have family going back four, five, six generations in. Boyle Heights, El Sereno, Lincoln Heights. Um, I also sit on the board of the bid. And all of this stuff was discussed. Sarah, I mean, just to look at minutes and say, oh, we discussed one item, therefore it must bleed into the next item is very, very ignorant of you. That's like me saying, because you dealt with Chick-fil-A right now, that must have to correlate with these planners. That makes no sense. Um, Gil, who's on your board, brought up his unbiased opinion i don't know gil that well um and you just argued with him over like because he gave his opinion i think everybody on the board should be able to give their opinion without you having to argue with them and and going out their throat for it um you reached out to us and we removed removed that immediately the handicap space one we did not give that direction as misty you know alluded to or basically said that got misplaced based off of the vendor doing that without our authority. Once we found out, we removed it immediately. A lot of this stuff could be prevented if you just reached out in a nice manner and said, hey, let's talk about this. Let's work together and we can fix these type of problems. But you choose to have the adversarial role and not want to work with us. Our goal is to basically just better Lincoln Heights. Now, am I saying that it's for everybody to have these planners? No, I'm not saying that. But at the time, our goal was, hey, we want to put flowers. Flowers are nice. They're pretty looking. Let's do things to beautify it. Now, if you went to the bid meetings and contributed, that's a different story. But you didn't. But afterwards, you're very quick to snap at us and get mad and get upset. To me, that doesn't make any sense. If you want to contribute like I am here, I'm giving you our opinion on what actually happened. Okay, to say you. that we don't need trash cans, we don't need this. I mean, that again, that's everybody's opinion. All of these people that you know, who, who support or don't support should go to said meetings and then give their opinion. But none of the people who, especially you, Sarah, who get really upset about this stuff were at that meeting and then now try to make a, some type of false narrative that homeless and planners are somehow coinciding when reality is we talked about two separate issues and then you go and sit here and read off in minutes and, and make up the stories based off of whatever, um, you know, I've already told you, I'm, hey, man, I would love to have a great conversation with everybody on the board. I would love for them to come to the bid meetings. I would love to meet them in person. But nobody ever reaches out to me. Um, nobody ever reaches out to anybody other than these board meetings. Again, I would love to have you guys at these bid meetings. I would love to talk to you guys. I would love you guys' opinion. Anybody who lives in Lincoln Heights as a stakeholder, anything, the more people you can get involved in these things, the better. Because everybody's opinion matters. But don't please make these these narratives and show a picture that's so old and keep recycling the same picture when the it's already been resolved Interesting. so thank you thank you yeah i mean vince i have a document with the whole my chain of emails that took a month and then i even emailed the bid and i got a response from a lawyer so you know uh but i know anyway uh, that's like i said the, the, water in the, yeah uh, so robert vega you're next robert vega. please state your name for the record Hello, Robert. Um, you, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So is this the last um, session to make any comments or are you continuing with something else? No, no, there's other things that will come on. This is just to keep on the subject of the, uh, the letter for the bid for the trash uh -huh. right now. So if, if you can keep the comment to that, if not, there are other issues that are gonna come up if you wanna comment on them. Okay, so I can bring up any comment later. I, I, and this is not uh, about the bid. 
So I no, guess I'll we, just we have the item nine is the last one for public comment, which is a non agenda item. So you can bring anything up at that time. Okay, I'll wait then. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, and uh, there are no more public comments. And we well, we have two public comments, but they these two people have already spoken, Sarah. Okay. We see so, Watsu and uh, Mr. Adams. We have a, another board member comment. We have Mel. Gil already spoke. Well, it's to Mel. Oh, sorry. I don't hold my video on. Okay, give me one second. Mel? I'm sorry. I'm going to keep this so quick, but it cannot be glossed over that this was very problematic for the disability community. Um, when there are things that are in the way of their autonomy and mobility that is already very difficult navigating through our current world, um, it, it can't be glossed over as like, sorry, it wasn't how we meant for it to be. It's like, make the plan and then go double check it because um, this is a community that's very marginalized constantly and things like this are a huge deal. I just wanted to say that. Thank you, Mel. Uh, Sarah, we also got Diego. Diego? I think, I think at Diego, we should stop because every other person has spoke already, at least. Okay, one. yeah, we got to, we have to bounce to the next uh, object. Next I'm, so, I, I, I'm sorry, Sarah and everyone else on the board. I'll make it quick. Um, but I, I like the idea of beautifying Broadway and making it more walkable, but I think the execution was not done well. If, if we're getting complaints from our stakeholders as a neighborhood council uh i implore the lincoln heights bid to really take that to heart and maybe consider whether you are outreaching enough and being transparent enough with your decision making process um because our job is to represent our constituents and we are just trying to make decisions based off of what we hear and we're hearing a lot of complaints about these planters i i i really don't think I really think that we need, if, if any sort of beautification is done on Broadway, it should be with the community's wants and desires as a forefront in that decision-making process. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Sarah, we have one one more, Fernanda. Oh, I, Fernanda, do you want? I did want to comment something because one of the comments just made me feel really uncomfortable and I felt like it needed to be addressed. Um, but I do understand that we have a lot of meetings on the agenda. So if we want to move forward, that's totally fine. No, uh, Fernie, I think you should you should state something. You're one of the people that haven't said anything. So please um, speak up. Yeah. Um, so with the neighborhood council, there's a lot of efforts in so many different areas that we want to address with what's going on in our community. And um, being an XCOM, I am CC'd in so many different emails. And it pains me to hear the narrative of making us seem like we're bad and don't wanna work with neighborhood organizations when that really isn't the case. I've seen the emails personally when we are reaching out to the people that have been invited to this meeting and to the bid with, and we are met with the same tension as that previous comment of like, not wanting to work with us. So I, I, I really felt like I needed to address the fact that the neighborhood council is definitely putting a lot of effort in trying to address so many different things and work with so many different people. And it's no surprise that of course, we're gonna be met with a lot of pushback and a lot of tension, but I don't think it's okay to start villainizing off of things that really aren't accurate. Um, because I mean, like I said, I'm being CC'd on so many things. I see everything and I don't think it's okay to say that we have never reached out to X, Y, and Z to try to solve something because that really isn't the case. Um, and of course we're here to serve the people. That's what we're here for. That's why all of us ran for the council because we see what the people see and feel but the people on top of us aren't listening to us which is why we're here. Um, that's all. Thank you. Bien dicho. That's right. Thank you, Fernanda. Okay, uh, Sarah, I went through everything and all the people with their hands up have already spoke. So I think we should move on to the next item. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next item. It's on the screen here. Um, announcement. Okay, so item, what is that, 8C? Uh, 
announcement of Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council vacancies as of the last meeting. Oh, one second before we move on, the approval of the letter, we have to vote on it. Oh, yeah. oh, the approval of the letter. Okay, so motion. <laughs> Sorry about that. The motion, I made the motion, Richard second. We had board discussion public and now we need to vote on it. I'm sorry. It's a long night so far. So can, we, can we, do we have to have another discussion now? No, 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 so, no. Uh, for, for, for can just answer, call the vote. Uh, roll call, please. So yeah. I'll do this really quickly and thank you again for everyone for still being here on the meeting. Um, Sarah? Uh, yes. Ben? I'll go back to you. Fernanda? Yes. Chente? Yes. Nancy? Yes. William still here? Benny? Yes. Didia? Yes. Joanna? Richard? Annalie? Annalie. Annalie, are you here? Give me one second. I have Wait, to we, we, we're, we're, we might have lost quorum here. Panel is 14. No, Annalie, I unmuted. Annalie, are you here? Yes. Oh, baby. There you go, Melanie. Yes, no one else leaves. <laughs> mm -hmm, nobody leave. We're gonna. Is Armita still here? No. Victor? No. Diego? Yes. Gil? No. Richard Ortiz? C. Steve? Yes. Lena? Is Lena still here? No. Selena? No. And Diana? Hello. Is it, <laughs> is it a yes or no? Abstain? Right here. Right. Oh, wait, oh wait, shoot. Oh, shoot. Yes. I mean, sorry. I am here. Going back to Ben. Ben Watson. Uh, no. Okay. All right. That's 12 yeses, two noes. We do have quorum. Motion carries. Motion carries. Okay. Now we move on to the next item. Item 8C. Announcement of Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council vacancies as of November 4th, 2021. Ready? Sarah, for time's sake, should we do this one? Because it's going to take a while. We have to. No, because there's just. Do we have people that have. That have we have one app application. Oh, okay. So, and then we have to get through to the paycheck. So, um, okay. So, yeah, we have three <laughs> positions. I'm just announcing them. One business representative seat, which ends in 2025. One area four rep representative resident seat, which ends in 2023. And one area seven representative resident, which ends in 2023. Uh, we have the maps on our website. Okay, so uh, area four is like- Before we start, uh, um, Melanie and Gilbert raised their hand. I don't know if they're- But they had already, they were, co they had already commented on the previous thing. Yeah. I don't know if it's pressing or something. I don't know if it's- Okay, are you worried? What? Yeah. <laughs> Melanie disappeared. Let me okay. <laughs> So, um, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so uh, discussion and act, possible action to appoint a stakeholder to vacant business representative seat term ending 2025. Uh, Fernie, have we received an application? Fernanda? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we have. Uh, we have an app. For business representative, yes, we have. We've received one application for all these seats. So, sh should I just read the rest and then we'll do the application? We'll, we'll, we'll continue the rest and just read the business, the one that we have the application for. Okay, so uh, do you wanna pull up the application? It's the supporting document titled 8C. I mean, it's just, it, you don't have to, it's his statement, that's all. Um, well, so let, let's see if he's, I don't know if he's here. Is the person that is applying for the seat here in the attendees, can you please raise your hand? It'll be RR, yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, let me just pull up the statement. It's the one with the old English on it at the bottom left there. Yeah, and it will be the last two pages. Okay. Oop, there. So that's the statement. Yeah. 
So I don't I don't think we can show this. Oh, we can't. It's all it's 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 cut out his private info. I know because I seen an address on there. But that's for the that's for the job. Okay. That's the mark. Yeah. Okay, everything's been redacted. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me see. Da, 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 da. Okay, so he can give his statement. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let me unmute. Okay, please state your name. So I actually am requesting for this to get pushed to the next meeting. And the reason being is that um, uh, Sarah's, I kind of got Sarah's email. Uh, it went to, it went to a, a different folder, I think. Uh, so basically what happened was I need to push it because I, I need to get a letter first from, from my ownership and my ownership was out of town. So I want to make sure that I get that to you before this application goes through. And then I have this, this discussion. Okay. Because um, per, per your request, I had to make sure to get that letter before the application can go through. And I just want to make sure that I'm following guidelines. Yeah. Vince, what's the pro totally the protocol? So like, we, we just continue it to next month. It'll come on next month. Next month. Yeah. Okay. Table yeah. it. Yeah, I'll table it. Yeah. So I will, I will have that letter in by the next, um, by the next uh, board meeting for next month. And then I will uh, discuss at that time. Okay. 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 Thank you. Cool. All right. Let's see. So we'll move on to the next site. Oh, wait. Well, I'll just read the. Do I have to read the rest of the discussion and possible actions if we have no applicants? No, if we have no applicants, <laughs> then we're just on items number. Give me one second. D. We're on D. Yeah, on items uh, D. No, no, not D. The representatives on items uh, C, C3 and C4. Uh -huh. there, are, there are no applicants. And we we will continue them on to the the December meeting, as well as as I for the for the I two for the business representative. That would be December second. December second. Yeah, December second. So if there's anybody in the public that wishes to fill those seats, they can do so by sending an application to Sarah, or really anybody on the board that would get it to the executives. Yeah. So just know that you can't. Your application will be seen on December the second, right, Sarah? Yes. Okay. Okay, so now we go to, is it 8D? 8D, funding items. <clears throat> okay, I'll make this painless and we can move through this pretty fast. Oh, all right. I mean, other councils have six hour meetings. Yeah, we're not trying to be like them or even close. Oh, to them. okay, so um, <laughs> let's see, so it's that one. Yeah, so I have them chronologically. Uh, <laughs> see all this love I do, I make these PDFs and nobody, see I put the little words at the top and everything. They're beautiful, Sarah, we love them right, as we love you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so here we go. Funding so guys, what you have before you right now is the October MER expenditure. Um, we did make a, a payment of five hundred and seventy-eight dollars to our public storage, which we had some back pay. Our public storage is two eighty-nine a month. Um, so that's the only payment that we have on there. We have no outstanding or anything. Um, our balance is uh, forty-one. $41,422. So uh, could I get a motion to approve the monthly expenditure for October? So moved. Okay. So um, Ben seconds. Can somebody make, uh, Ben made the motion. Can someone second Ben's motion? I'll second it. Okay. Gilbert seconds. Uh, any board discussion? Not seeing any. Is there any public comment? We have one, uh, Robert Vega. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Actually, I wanna go back to the uh, BID, the bid uh, area hey, where- Robert, we, we have to stay on, on the topic of this because this is only a public discussion on the MER. At the end on item nine, you can, you can make that comment under public comment and on agenda items if you wanna bring up something that you heard on the bid section spoke to you earlier until something came up and I put my hand up and you didn't you didn't recognize me so I want to give the, my minute on BID Robert it's going to be impossible we have to follow the rules on this no it's, it's not going to be a pro problem because I raised my hand again and you didn't recognize me we're giving you we're giving you the option under public comment and I if, if you don't have a comment now for what the MER is 
then you can comment on item nine. Look, this is what's going on. And I think it's Robert, wrong that you guys are doing. This, at this time, you, you're, you're on. You guys, I mentioned about outreach. Here, you have Diego um, telling BID that they're not doing any outreach. Robert, you're out of order. I've been, I've been reaching out to Diego for over a couple of months now. Okay. You know, he's this making decisions our, on our the board. Morning, and on the next morning, we're going to have to sign you for being out of order. And I, I wish not to do that. Thank you. Okay, not seeing any public comment. This is a, a roll count vote. Oh. Uh, just please say yes. Okay. Sarah? Oh, yes. Okay, this is to approve. You say yes or no, or like, you know, it's a roll call. Exactly. Ben? You're telling me to say yes. Oh. Okay. Ben? Yes. Okay, Fernanda? Yes. Okay, Vincent, yes. Nancy Soto? Yes. Okay, William Morris? Okay, Not here. Ben, Benny Madera? Yes. Okay. Oh, God, Delilah, I don't want to twist that name. I'm so horrible with it. Didia? Thank you. Yes. Okay, I'm practicing. Deanna Tran? Ineligible. Okay. Give me one second. I keep forgetting on that when I typed you in this. Okay, Richard Larson is absent. Annalie Hare, R, excuse me. Oh, hold on, she's here. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Melanie? Yes. Okay, Vicente Gonzalez is absent. Uh, Armida, absent. Victor, absent. Diego? Yes. Gil? Yes. Richard Ortiz? Yes. Steve? Yes. Okay, Lena, absent. Selena, absent. Johanna is absent. Okay, motion, motion passes. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold on, we have 13, okay. Yep, yeah, it's 13, 13 yes, zero no's, no abstentions, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight absences, and one ineligible. Okay. Okay, let bear me, with us, people. Okay, let me move on to this next one. Okay, supplementals. Right, because these are funding things, so we have to vote for them, you know, money, so we have to go through the call. are these the only supplemental documents we had up? No, if you click on the, if you click on the funding one and you scroll through it, it has all of the- uh, Oh, cool, cool, okay, now I can. I mean, see how much love I put into this? That mm -hmm. is love, okay. I mean, to so make the next it item <laughs> is funding, it's funding up to, it's funding up to $1,000, not to exceed $1,000 from the operational budget from the fiscal year 2021. And the following items below are the ones that are being considered for purchase, which is a, an Epson printer. Um, we got Epson ink, black ink, Epson color ink. There's two of each. Um, there's also a purchase of uh, Boise uh, paper. That's two of them. And I think it's a 10 rim paper, uh, 10 rings of paper. There's uh, dividers and then there's plastic protectors. Okay, let me get this Thanks. down. Is there a motion to approve the thousand? So move. Okay, so Ben Ben uh, Ben makes a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Richard seconds. Oh, now where did I put that at? Okay. Community dis board discussion on a box of paper. Yeah. <laughs> Boise you paper and some so. A staple gun, yeah. Okay, so Gil, uh, are you going with public comment first or? I uh, let's go to. This, this is this is regarding the, the budget items. Uh, okay. We'll open it up for. Uh, uh, well, Sarah, that's what I'm asking, Sarah. Do you want to go? Yeah, yeah. Let's or do, you go let's just do. We'll just do board and then okay. or whatever. Gil. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, the, my, I don't uh, doubt any, any all of this. So you're saying that, and I think if I recall something in my training and everything else like that, you can you can spend uh, uh, up to a, a certain amount uh, without uh, uh, at your discretion and everything else like that. But the rest of these items, uh, frankly, uh, I uh, you by your own admission haven't had a budget meeting, so uh, these motions are coming like out of the air, and uh, that's my question. Uh, they're just necessities that we have, and we do have it budgeted under operational items. So operation items, like you stated, normally we don't have to pass these, and the treasurer has the authority to, to swipe the card, but that's not how Lincoln Heights works. We want to make sure that we're transparent not only to our board members, but also to the public. So even if, I, if we're not required to put these items up, I think it's good practice for us to put everything up. That, 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 was, my, that was my question, uh, Vince. It was, uh, uh, I know that uh, you can do without requiring, but yes, uh, uh, you can. Uh, it's, it's good for transparency and everything else like that. Uh, but uh, that was my question and you answered it, okay? Thank you. Okay, any other okay. questions? And then we have Benny. Uh, yeah, I'm just really quick. I'm just curious why we went with Epson. Like, was there research done, or are we just is it just a crapshoot as far as hoping it's a good brand? Or no, we we try to go with the cheapest one that we have out there that that we're going to be able to utilize for a lot of different things. Like even you know anything from a sticker that we need to make for a project we have to paper. Most most printers nowadays don't last too long. Uh, th this one had the longest life. Well, you know, when you're paying, you know, that much for it, it's always going to have a few more years on it. But I think it'll serve us well in it. And plus, the the ink value too was another thing we looked into on how much the cartridges have cost over time. And we don't plan to plant. I mean, print too much color stuff. But there are times where we're going to need, especially like in the treasury. I have to start making um, a printable copy when we meet in public, and so will for, uh, Fernanda to start keeping live documents with us when we go to the meeting. And there has to be a copy of even these DACs for the public to view. I mean, I'm telling you, the, the laser jet, the $100 brother, you know, I print, basically you can hang these on a telephone pole and it rains and rains and they don't bleed. It prints like 5,000 pages. Black and white. <clears throat> they don't cry. <laughs> The best printer ever, but if you want color, that's another world. I, I, don't, I don't operate in color, the world of color. So, um, but in, uh, and in any case, this, uh, Vince, this uh, proposal or whatever, it's uh, kind of negotiable, right? Like, I mean, there's- Yeah, well, well, it leaves it open to one thing, because when we go out there and purchase, and I've done these several times, sometimes this model's not gonna be there and we have to get a cheaper model. And right now there's a chip shortage. So even calling Office Depot, or we might even have to go to another place to purchase it, but it would be comparable to what we have here. So yeah, I mean, everything can change on it. It's yeah, just better that, that we the have reason, The reason why I brought it up is because I, I actually purchased an Epson and it was an eco tank and the feeder, uh, it worked initially, but then it stopped working. So that's why I was just wondering. Um, oh, that's, that's good for us to know because then I'm gonna look, like I said, we can change it. I'll look for another one out there um, because yeah, we don't want to have any problems with it. But then again, I hate to say it, every printer I bought never lasts me that long. I do use them a lot, but I'm just like, oh God, they need to last a little bit longer. Ink, yeah, ink but I, will, I will keep everyone updated with the report back before we purchase anything to make sure that we get something and that if, in, if any of these are even available, because even the paper, I know there's a, there's oh, a we could talk forever about printers here. Yeah, no, I don't want to talk too much about it, but uh, Ben, I see Ben's hand was up. Yeah, I was just going to make a comment that uh, I've got both an Epson and a uh, Hewlett Packard, and they both work very well in chess. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that if you don't use it for a while, uh, your jets will clog up. So even if you don't have a lot of stuff to print, uh, every couple of days you have to run a sheet through, or you're going to have uh, problems when you need the machine. Yes, I just had that happen to me. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. <laughs> I didn't, I, okay, and then uh, I think Gil already spoke, so. I, I, have, I want to bring you some information, if you oh, don't man. mind. 
I I have a printer in, in Epson, and I, I I use it every day in my business. Okay, and uh, they they if you take care of them, they'll last a long time. But uh, it just popped to my mind. Uh, just a, this is a question on, on the ink. Now my ink, uh, I have the, the the four cartridges, and they 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 are uh, uh, twenty three dollars each. Twenty three dollars each. So uh, I just question. Uh, I know that all the all the different inks for different different models are different, uh, at different prices and everything else like that. But uh, that's what my ink costs me for my all purpose uh, uh, scanner, uh, fax, uh, printer, and everything, which I use every day. That's a good thing. That's a good thing that Epson's good for, for you. Now we hope it's good for all of us. It's called ink theory. Ink theory. They give you the print, printer for free and then the ink costs like a thousand bucks. That's a, it's a look it up. Uh, okay, so now uh, public comment. Oh, we have Anna Anna Lee. Hold on. Anna Lee's a whole <laughs> Yeah, I forget she's older and I feel I feel bad now. We love you. Anna Lee. Um, okay, I guess there's maybe right. a technical difficulty on it. What, where Hold is? on, I thought, come on done. Anna Lee? Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, so I don't I don't have any more comments on the public or any other side. For a vote, right? Yeah, this goes down to a vote again, similar to what we just did. Uh okay, uh Sarah? Yes. Okay, Ben. Yes. Okay, Fernanda. Yes. Okay, Vincent. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Okay, William Morris is absent. Benny Madera. Yes. Okay, Didia. Yes. Okay, uh, Deanna. Ineligible. Okay, Richard Larson is absent. Anna Lee. Anna Lee. Okay, I'll come back. Uh, Melanie. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, Vicente Gonzalez is absent. Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. oh yes, yes, Anna Lee. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'll mark you in right now. Thank you. Uh, Armida was absent. Victor is absent. Diego? Yes. Okay, Gil? Yes. Okay, Richard Ortiz? C. Thank you, Steve. Yes. Lena, absent. Selena Ortega's absent. Joanna's absent. Okay, motion passes. 13 yes. Okay. Silent hammer. Motion carries. Uh, okay, so then we move on to the next item of getting our webmaster paid all the way back to June. Okay, so mm -hmm. this one would help everyone. Most, gonna, like, most of these, except for this one, that was the, a the invoice that you're seeing now, okay, is for two months, the month of June and July. But each of our months are $155 each. Okay, the cost for our web maintenance is $135 for two hours. There's an extra charge for co uh, constant contact fee, which is for our emails. And each of those charges are $20 a fee. So it's bringing the, the total up for each month at $155. So the total for these two months is $310. Um, but I'm going to be splitting the bill up, so I'll send more information. But right now, we're voting on approving with this invoice the month of July of June of 2021. So can I get a motion to approve? So move. Okay, $155 to pay for the month of June. And this is going to be paid to the mailroom, Christina Smith. Okay, let me bring June down. Okay, just give me one second. I know I've got it here. Here it is. You get a second. I second. Okay. Diego seconds. Is there any board comment? Yes. Okay, there's 
one Didia. Give me one second. Thank you. This is Didia. It appears that we have five identical items except that they cover different months. Can we do that in a consent package because we are more than three and a half hours into a meeting with no breaks? No, I wish we could and I did try to do that, but they don't allow us to. I box Let's them. move on. I know. Sorry about that. Okay, so there's no there's no board member comment. Anna Lee, I see your hand up. Okay. okay. No comment. Okay. Public comment. Um, no, no board member comment. Is there any public comment? Okay, not seeing any closing public comment. Yes. We're gonna go down the roll. The <clears throat> excuse me, the vote. Sarah. Yes. Ben. Yep. Fernanda. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Okay, William Morris is absent. Benny Madera? Yes. Okay, uh, Didia? Yes. Okay, Deanna? Ineligible. Got you. Anna Lee? Okay. Oh, uh, she, she's muted right now, she can't. <clears throat> Melanie? Yes. Okay, Vicente is absent. It's June, July. Uh, Armida is absent. Victor, absent. Diego? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Gil? Yes. Richard Ortiz? Yes. <clears throat> Sorry, yes. Steve? Yes. And Lena's absent. Selena Ortega's absent. And Jonah's absent. Motion passes, 13. Motion oh, I really hear that was the next <laughs> motion carries. Um, okay, so on to the next item of uh, August. No, July. No, oh, it was a double. Okay, just yeah, June. Now we're doing July. So okay. this is the same bill I'm going to be using. Don't move. Okay. Vince, second. Come on with this. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No board member comment. Let's read last names when you call the question. Board. Let's vote. <laughs> yeah, like just just like bang it out. We have four more. Ineligible. This. All right, I'm gonna run this thing. Can I run it? Hold no, on, hold on. Remember, have... remember, there's a process. We yes, please. Go, we just gotta go. Board member, no comment. Is there any public? Any public comment? No comment. Okay, let's go to the. All right, let's go, go, go. Sarah. Oh, we're voting. Yes. Yes. Ben. Yes. Okay, Fernanda. Yes. Okay, Nancy. Yes. Okay, Benny. Yes. Delete. See, I, I, I forgot the name. D Didia. There we yes. Go. Okay, Deanna. Ineligible. Ineligible. Okay, Richard Larson. Absent. Annalie Harris. Hera, sorry. Uh, she's still mu muted. Uh, Melanie. Yes. Vicente. Absent. Armidas. Absent. Victor's absent. Diego. Yes. Okay, Gil. Yes. Richard, yes. Richard. Okay. Steve? Yes. Okay. And Lena's absent. Selena Ortega's absent. And so is Joanna. Motion carries. Motion carries. On to the next item. Uh, August. Right? Yes. Now we're going to August. So move. Oh. Second. Second. Third. Okay. <laughs> Any board member comment? No, this is serious stuff. Don't joke around. No board, you no could board go to the treasurer. Hold on, let's just call it so it's here. There's no board member comment. There's no public comment. Hold on. We have a board member comment. Diane. Diane. Can't we just do the whole if you, if, uh, no. uh, uh oh. can't, can we just do the, you can't, if, if, you, if you like, if there's any disagreements, no. just say it's, no. Okay, it's money. We, we can't. We Damn have, it. We have to, the treasurer's the only guy who can go to jail on the council. Yeah, don't send me to the to the big house. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's roll. We have no public comment. We have no board member comment. So here we go. Sarah. Yes. Okay, Ben. Yes. Okay, Fernanda. Yes, yes. Okay, Vincent, yes. Nancy. Yes. William. Benny. Yes. Didia. Yes. Deanna. Ineligible. Ineligible. Richard Larson. 
half percent. Anna Lee is muted. Melanie, yeah. Yes. Vicente, absent. Armida, absent. Victor, absent. Diego. Yes. Gil. Yes. Richard Ortiz. Yes. Steve. Yes. Motion motion carries. Motion carries. Now we move on to September. We're in September now. I'll move. Second. Okay. We're going to <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no there's no board comment, no public comment. We're moving to the vote. All right. Okay, uh, Sarah. Yes. Ben. Yes. Renanda. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Benny Madera. Yes. Delilah. Didia. Yes. Didia. Hey, come on, man. Sorry. It's a killer to me. Sorry. Deanna? Ineligible. Okay. Richard Larson, absent. Annalise, still having issues on the phone. Melanie? Yes. Okay. Vicente, absent. Armida, absent. Victor, absent. Diego? Yes. Gil? Yes. Okay. Richard Ortiz? Yes. Okay. And Lena? Selena and John are absent. Motion carries. Motion carries. Uh, what okay. month now? October? Our last one, October. The Ooh. page is almost over. Don't worry, babe. Okay, here Don't we go. Move. There's no... Second. Uh, okay, we got... <laughs> okay, there is no board member comment, and I'm calling for public comment, and there's no public comment. Okay, Sarah, we're going to the vote? Yes. Okay. Ben? Yes. Uh, Fernanda? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Okay. William Morris is absent. Benny? Yes. Did he, I can't say it. Didia. Didia. Thank you. It's Didia at 943 under any name, yes. Okay. <laughs> Deanna, ineligible. Okay. And then Richard Larson is absent. Anna Lee. Okay, we'll skip her. Melanie. Yes. Vicente Gonzalez absent. Armida absent. Victor absent. Diego. Yes. Gil. Yes. Richard Ortiz. Yes. Okay, and Steve. Yes. Lena and Selena and Jonah are absent. And motion carries. I thank you all for bearing with me. <laughs> all right, now we move on to uh, is a public comment again. Yeah, public yeah. comment, one minute each. The big, um, yeah, it's like the outro. All right, public comment. I am nine. One, and then we'll. I'll put the timer up. Ooh. Okay, Robert Vega. Robert Vega. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yes. Okay. Now, the presentation that was done by about uh, Tom and I guess Testimonials was supposed to be part of it. Um, you know, it says urgency. You know, this is something that hasn't even been on the table. And yet, you know, they're, they're already talking about it. You know, let them first um, make the presentation to the community and then from there decide where it's going. I know that um, last week's meeting, you guys brought it up and you know, it's, it's taped, but it would seem like you guys already made a decision on it. You know, I find it odd that both Hollywood and West Hollywood have very strong LGBT, LGBTQ communities and both have Chick-fil-A. Long Beach has a very strong LGBTQ um, community and they also have several Chick-fil-A. So I'm not sure why you guys don't want it here in Lincoln Heights. It doesn't make sense. Did they also, you know, he talked about um, the process of the food. Has He's been here in Lincoln Heights for a while. Did he protest all Boyo Loco, McDonald's, all the other fast food restaurants? And does he have data or whatever that he's going to present to the, to the board? You know, I think it's unfair. Time is up on the public comment. Excuse me? 
uh, our time is up. We only allow one minute for public comment. Sure, I, I understand. But uh, Robert, I, I encourage you to come to our land use meeting because this issue is going to be taken up in the land use, and we'll have more time to speak there on those issues that you're bringing up. Sure. I mean, I, I've I've been on listening, and you know, I've, I've you know, I'm here to make sure that this community is well well served, and hopefully, that you guys understand that there are people in this community that do have concerns for this community. And we'd like to make the best of this community for all. So I'd like to thank you guys and good night. Thank you, Robert. Good night. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Thank good you, night. Robert. Okay, hey, good night. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sarah, please. Well, wait, who wants to motion to close? Wait, where's my agenda? I'll do this. It's on oh, the screen. Oh, yeah, no, closing remarks. I'm, I'm going to save them to next time. Okay. So I'd like to make the motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you all for hanging in. And I'm going to work with Sarah that these meetings will not go past this time anymore. But thank Goodbye. you Goodbye. Take care. It's long, but we'll oh, work on it. But you guys are soldiers. I can be on here for 20 hours. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Take care, everyone. Sarah, thank you, everyone. Who's good night, good. Ah. Good. 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 Thank you, everyone. Good, good night. Around. Good night. Take care. Good night. Bye. Bye. Oh, next meeting. I'll tell you guys if I get Bye. the full ride or not. Bye. All right. yeah, good luck, Anna. Thank I you. Good luck. Oh, nice to you. You're success. You got this. Look at Benny. <laughs> Benny's still awake. He has toothpicks on his eyes. <laughs> 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 Keep going, Benny. You guys are all good soldiers of the community. Don't let anything get you down. Everyone, have a good night. Keep fighting. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Thank you.